as the Blue Jays prepare to take on the Athletics in Game 4 of this four-game series. The baseball news has come out of Cincinnati this morning when Judge Norbert Nadell ruled in favor of Pete Rose granting a temporary 14-day injunction keeping baseball from having a hearing in New York on Pete Rose's alleged gambling indiscretions. Judge Norbert Nadell based his decision on a letter that Commissioner Bart Giamatti wrote to Carl Rubin on behalf of Rose's chief accuser, Ron Peters. It is my purpose to bring to your attention the significant and truthful cooperation Mr. Peters has provide to, provided to my special counsel who is conducting the investigation into allegations concerning the conduct and activities of Pete Rose, the manager of the Cincinnati Reds baseball club. The commissioner of baseball goes on to say to Judge Rubin, I am satisfied Mr. Peters has been candid, forthright, and truthful with my special counsel. It therefore appears to this court at this point that the commissioner of baseball has prejudged Peter Edward Rose. We further find that the hearing set tomorrow in New York before the commissioner of baseball would be futile and illusory and the outcome a foregone conclusion. Accordingly, I here today grant Peter Edward Rose's motion for a temporary restraining order. In Oakland, it's the final game of this four-game series. The A's and the Blue Jays, a capacity crowd, a sellout for this one this afternoon. As uh, that statement by Judge Nadel, what did you think of it, Buck? Well, the thing is, it's a little surprising. I really didn't think that he would make this decision. I think he would just say, okay, it's baseball. Let them take care of their own problems. But the court in Cincinnati decides that Pete Rose should have the opportunity to get a fair hearing and ask Rose's attorney put it in front of a fair decision maker. That's a pretty strong statement there. But I think it's something that has to be resolved. My own opinion is that they've taken too long to decide this thing. It's into June, almost into July now before that hearing date will come. And I think it very well could have been something a little bit more prudent, done it earlier, maybe even as far back as spring training. Well, Judge Nadel has another decision to make. They've given him until tomorrow to make the commissioner's 225-page report on Rose public or give a reason why it should remain confidential. Now, the Cleveland Plain Dealer has sued to have that report made public. I wonder what will happen then. Well, there's also the possibility that Major League Baseball will appeal this as early as today. They were meeting right after the decision was rendered, and they felt that Lewis Hoynes, their attorney, felt that it was an error. He was uh, felt it was an erroneous ruling, and he says it's a problem, a serious problem, and he said that he didn't know yet whether or not baseball would appeal, but I think there's an appeal on the way. The main bone of contention, I guess, made by Judge Nadel was the fact that that critical piece of evidence was a letter written by Giamatti to Judge Carl Rubin on behalf of Ron Peters, who's a convicted felon and one of the key witnesses in uh, the gambling allegations. And that letter was in support of Ron Peters saying he was forthright, helpful, honest. And I think uh, the commissioner would very much like to have that letter back. Yes, you got that right. Okay, as far as today's game is concerned, it'll be Storm Davis on the mound for the Oakland A's. Davis with a record of five and three. He's one and oh against the Jays. He beat John Cerruti earlier this season, three to one, went seven innings, gave up six hits, and the Jays got a run off him. But he's making his 12th start today, and look at that earned run average, Buck Martinez. He's still got a winning record, and it's 5.94. Terry Steinbach, Storm Davis has had some latent problems, but it seems as though he's over him. How is he throwing lately? Well, Storm's been throwing the ball very, very well. As, as you mentioned, his only downfall this year has been that he keeps re-injuring. I believe it's a hamstring in, in, in one of his legs. Uh, if he can overcome that problem, you know, we don't anticipate any problem today with him throwing. So he missed 20 days, and that's uh, equivalent of five starts. That's the lineup he'll be facing. 
For the Blue Jays, it'll be Felix in center field. Tony Fernandez continues to swing a hot bat. Groover's in left field today. George Bell gets the day off. Fred McGriff will be the cleanup batter. Ernie Witt's behind the plate. Lloyd Mosby gets a start today in center field. He's been hampered by back problems. Rance Mullenix, the DH. Manny Lee over at third base. And Nelson Liriano will bat ninth and play second base. Mosby has missed nine games. And Junior Felix will lead it off. As you look at the defense, Ricky Henderson in left, Dave Anderson in center, Javier in right. Carney Lansford is, I thought he was the scheduled DH today, and Phillips was playing third. Unless that was a last-minute change, Gallego the shortstop. Blankenship at second, and McGuire over at first. Phillips is the third baseman. They've had some problems. Hubbard was supposed to play. Lansford scheduled in there. But Hubbard had some eye problems, and Tony La Russa had to put Phillips in the lineup. Felix, Felix made a couple of errors yesterday. Lack of concentration. Four errors in the ballgame for the Blue Jays. We talked about it off the top. The defense has been outstanding, but yesterday it seemed as though they'd forgotten how they'd done it earlier in the week. But Felix moves back to right field today. Felix has been a big plus in the offense and the defense of the Blue Jays. He's had a couple of four hit games this season. Fouls that one back out of play. Felix much more aggressive from the left side. He sees the ball a lot better, much more confident. Lays a bunt down and catches Phillips flat-footed. A base hit for Junior Felix. That's the second time we've seen Felix bunt with two strikes and square around so confident that he can beat it out. He actually takes it like a sacrifice bunt and squares up to the pitcher. The defense doesn't expect it because there's two strikes. Phillips was playing awfully deep. Watch how he deliberately squares around and makes basically a sacrifice bunt. But Phillips is so far back and he has to charge so hard, he had to barehand it and couldn't come up with it. Felix simply says, I'm going to challenge you with my speed. And that's what he does. Caught him off guard when he had two strikes. So the hitter is Tony Fernandez. And he had his big hitting streak, 16 gamers snapped yesterday, 0 for 4. During that streak, he hit 466. And his average now all the way back to 262. Felix, short lead over at first. Fernandez pops that one up. Phillips will have a play. And now, that big foul territory here in the Oakland Coliseum really causes hitters some problems. That normally goes out of play in most ballparks, but you can look at that picture right there. All of the foul territory. I think cost the Oakland A's probably five or six points on the team batting average over the course of a season. A lot of room on both sides of the field. A sellout crowd. About 50,000 fans here. 7,000 of them, which are little leaguers. That pitches a ball to Kelly Gruber, and he had a 15-hit streak stopped yesterday. Up against a real tough pitcher, Dave Stewart went the distance. His 12th win of the year. Felix gets back at first. Felix has been caught eight times, and he has stolen eight bases this season. There's no question about it. He will develop as a big base dealer. There he goes. Gruber slaps a base hit into left field. Felix will stay at second as Ricky Henderson picks it up and gets it back in. Because Gruber hit that ball so hard and it got to Henderson so quickly, even though Felix was running on the pinch, he couldn't go to third base. Sinking fastball on the inner half of the plate, Gruber pulls it by Phillips at third base, and Henderson gets to it quickly, so he holds Junior Felix to second base. You'll remember Friday's telecast. We had 13 runs scored in the first inning, and boy, he got a good jump, didn't he? Trying to be aggressive and make things happen here early for the Blue Jays. Freddie McGriff now hitting in the number four spot with Bell on the bench today. Cito Gaston said, if I give Bell a rest today, that means he'll have two days off, and uh, he really has had a tough campaign, playing with a lot of little hurts. 
and he was thrown out of yesterday's ball game. Well, Cito, being a former player himself, knows that they've got a tough stand up against the Orioles, and if he can take advantage of this day plus the off day tomorrow, he will really do a favor for Bell. Ground ball, base hit by Fred McGriff. Here comes Felix. Gruber's heading to third. The throw's going to beat him. He's out. A pretty good throw by Stan Javier in right field. What happened on that play was Javier charged hard, and Johnny McLaren, the third base coach, had gone down the third base line towards home to help Felix out. Another changeup that just gets by McGuire at first base. Felix has outstanding speed, and once Javier gets it, he's going right to third base all along, but Gruber doesn't have the advantage of Johnny McLaren. When he came around second base, McLaren was up the line at third trying to make sure Felix went home, and Gruber hesitated as he rounded second base. Good point. Now the batter is Ernie Witt as McLaren looks on down to that third base coaching box. Ernie's only had five hits in the past nine games, so he has been struggling a bit at the plate. He had his average up over 3.30. Good rip on a high fastball. Davis had so much promise early in his year career in Baltimore, and they talked about him being the next Jim Ballmer, and that's a tremendous burden to carry if you're a young player trying to stay up with that reputation but last year an outstanding year 16 wins he was named the American League comeback player of the year in that pennant winning effort that evens up the count of the ball and a strike Davis was very similar to Palmer in his career he had a high fastball and a big overhand curveball but he's since developed a split finger change up and a slider to go with that. There's a fastball on the inside corner. In Davis's last three outings, he beat Texas five to nothing and Baltimore seven to five. As Wet hits one into right field, base hit. So that throw by Javier to nail Groover at third is a big play in this ball game. Saved one run to this point. And for Gruber, that's the toughest play for a base runner. Generally, when you round second base, you pick up the third base coach. And he looked in the coaching box, and McLaren was already gone. As you look by Blankenship, Witt pulls that fastball into the hole at second. Blankenship just couldn't knock it down. Mosby, the hitter, as we said earlier, he has missed nine games with back problems. Average at 212. Six home runs, 20 RBIs. Boy, he's had some good years in this ballpark, hasn't he, Buck? Well, he comes out here. This is his home. Yep. This is where he grew up. He lives in Sacramento now, which is just up the road a piece, but he's always enjoyed coming out here and had a lot of success in this park. Big swing. Boy, that doesn't look like any back problems there. Really turned it loose. Well, let's hope he stays healthy the rest of the way. You know, he told me today that he felt like his back problems were over. He needed the rest. Uh, he's confident that all of his problems are behind him. That pitch is low. Three and one, the count to Mosby. As I was about to say earlier, Davis's last outing was against Detroit, and it was his shortest of the year. Just three and a third. Gave up four earned runs, five hits. So the Blue Jays have already had four base hits this inning off of Davis, but they've only scored one. Fly ball, left field, Ricky Henderson draws a beat on it. So Lloyd Mosby is the third out. Lloyd Mosby, what's going on with your back? You get a start today, first time in a long time. Yeah, it has been a long time. In fact, I don't even know what center field's at, but somehow I'll find it out there. But, uh, Buck, I feel great. I feel like I can go out and play center field. I, I feel that my body is ready to go out and play baseball now. 
You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays Baseball on TSN. Underneath all those delicious pizza toppings lies the secret of McCain Croissant Pizza. You gonna finish that last piece of crust? If you'll let me have it, I'll uh, double your allowance. How about a new stereo for that last bite of crust? What a guy. McCain Croissant Pizza. With the crust nobody leaves behind. The place to be is TSN. You'll be front row when the best of the majors take the field. Be a part of it all. Action that's a hit on our Major League Game of the Week. Then the baseball action continues as the Expos deal with the Astros. It's the second of two. Montreal and Houston live from Olympic Stadium. And later we're in Daytona Beach, Florida with one thing in mind. NASCAR racing. Winston Cup points are on the line at the Pepsi 400. Saturday, the thrills are here on TSN. Jimmy Key at 7-6, and six, his 17th start today. Four complete games, and he snapped his personal four-game losing streak in his last outing against the Angels. This season against Oakland, he's had one outing, no decision, went eight innings, gave up nine hits, three earned runs as Oakland won it four to three. So Jimmy Key looks like he's back on track after that outing against the Angels. They straighten out some mechanical problems, and this is the lineup he'll be facing. Tony Larus is Oakland Athletics. Ricky Henderson leads it off. He'll be in left field. Dave Henderson's the center fielder. Carney Lansford gets a day off defensively. He's the DH. Mark McGuire over at first base. Terry Steinbach looks like he's headed to the All-Star game for the second year in a row. Tony Phillips, Mr. Everything. He's playing third base. Lance Blankenship gets a start at second. Mike Gallego's the shortstop, and Stan Javier in right field. As far as the defense is concerned for Toronto, Gruber, Mosby back in center, Felix in right, Manny Lee at third, Fernandez, Liriano, McGriff, and Wick behind the plate. That pitch is high, two balls and no strikes to Ricky Henderson. Henderson hit a home run off of Dave Steve in yesterday's game. He holds the major league record for home runs leading off a game with 36. That was a pretty good shot he hit yesterday, too. And he's the guy, Steve, that is, that Ricky said he hated to face most of all yep. when we talked to him Friday. Sure did. But right now, key. There's a look at David. Really didn't pitch as badly as the record would indicate yesterday. Steve standing beside pitching coach Al Whitmar, and Steve told the reporters and everyone else that would listen after the game that he had real good stuff in yesterday's ball game. And he said his last four starts, his stuff wasn't that good, but he was winning. He says, how do you figure it out? To left field, foul ball. You know, I think Ricky Henderson is really going to flourish here in this atmosphere. I think with Dave Parker on the team, the veteran player that he is, who's been involved with so many great clubs, going back to the Pirates and then Cincinnati and last year's pennant winning effort here in Oakland. But Henderson, I think, is just going to say, OK, I'm the leadoff guy. I don't have to provide an awful lot of offense. Let me get on base. I'll steal you some runs and give you a pretty good defense in the outfield. But I think the big thing about this Oakland's club is, hey, nobody's bigger than the team. No matter what you think, somebody on this club has done it better than you have. Pitch is low. Henderson draws a walk. That's only the 11th walk that Jimmy Key has given up in over 100 innings. And, of course, Henderson leads the American League in walks. With Henderson on first base, always a threat to steal. This is probably the best defense the Blue Jays can throw at him with Jimmy Key on the mound. Outstanding move to first base. Dave Anderson, the hitter, he's been in a terrible slump. Six hits his last 49 plate appearances. 0 for 5 yesterday. 
Pitches away inside. Renee Latchman is a third base coach. When you have a new player on your club like Ricky Henderson, does it take you a while to adjust to his speed and to enable you to judge how to uh, coach him over to third? It doesn't take you a long time to adjust. It makes you very happy to have somebody out there with speed like that. Uh, I know they call me windmill a little bit over there in Boston when we had some guys thrown out. And uh, I like to be aggressive as a third base coach and send people. But uh, we had some guys that uh, just couldn't run, really. And uh, when you send them and they get thrown out, things don't work out too good. But with Ricky, uh, you know, the speed that he has, scoring him from second base uh, is not real tough. Although, as far as uh, your outfield, uh, now you've lost Barfield a little bit. But when I see that Jose or Felix out there, he possesses an outstanding arm, too. And to me, the ballpark in Exhibition Stadium, as a third base coach, you want a toughest place to go ahead and score runners because of the outfield with Mosby and Bell and, and Barfield there. You all had great arms. But uh, getting back to the original question as far as Ricky, I'm happy he's on our ball club and happy to have his speed on the bases. Sounds like Casey Stengel to me. Oh, that was a long one. What did he say? <laughs> he said he's glad that Ricky's here. I guess he should be. <laughs> the count is three balls and a strike to Dave Henderson as Key has fallen behind. And that's another thing that Ricky does. He's a distraction at yep. first base. Catches the inside part of the plate. Full count. With that split screen, you can really see how Key's delivery has Henderson confused. That last pitch, Henderson was actually breaking back towards the bag. There goes Henderson. And Dave Henderson fouls that pitch off. Ricky had a terrible jump there. It was almost like a hit and run break instead of a stolen base attempt. Well, he has 25 stolen bases, but he has been caught nine times this season. Dave McKay leaning. Watch. Look at now he's late. Checking out the Henderson swing at the plate, and he knew it was out of play. up glasses down he's got it and Ricky Henderson will head back to first one down very tough sun field in the daytime all the outfielders wearing glasses have a look high sky bright sunny day here in Oakland and Lloyd Mosby had to battle a tough sun out there in center field you can see by his shadow it's directly overhead and everybody will have to converge on the fly balls to help out one another in the outfield Carney Lansford, the hitter, the designated hitter today. The rookie, Steve Cummings, who was brought up the other day, hit Lansford in yesterday's ball game. You know, I talked to Carney about getting hit yesterday. He says, I hate facing rookie pitchers because you don't know what to expect for him. He said, I was watching him pitch. He threw four different pitches on the first pitch every time before me, and I was really in between what to look for. There's a strike. Veteran hitters, especially good ones like Lansford, like to get a pattern of a pitcher and then look for a particular pitch. He couldn't do that, so his mind was in between, and then Cummins busted that fastball in on him and caught him on the elbow. Speaking of Cummings, he looked like Cy Young the first inning out, and then the second inning, he had trouble throwing strikes. He throws over, Ricky Henderson back. But he looks like he's got a good arm, Buck. Oh, he has an outstanding yeah. arm. Good movement on the fastball. He'll throw around 90 miles an hour. I think he's a good addition to this club. Key versus Henderson again at first base. Speaking of Cummings, he replaced Kevin Batiste. Boy, he's got his problems. He'll have his day in court on Tuesday. Batiste is facing some serious charges. Possession of a concealed weapon carrying a loaded gun and possession of stolen property. He was arrested around 10.30 yesterday, released about 11.30 last night. Boy, that's a hard one to figure it out, isn't it, Buck? Oh, boy. Bad news. You don't expect it from, you know, a young player or anybody in this game. There's so much to gain if you uh, just keep your nose clean and the kind of money you can make these days, and you just wonder where a person's head is at. A ball and two strikes. Lansford fouls that one off. Carney gets the day off more or less as the DH. They're going into Minneapolis and Carney's been bothered by a knee problem. Now he's 
carrying around a sore elbow, so Tony La Russa wanted to give him a day off defensively. So he plays so hard and so intense out there that DH is like a day off for Carney Lansford. And right now he's third in the American League in hitting. Hits that down the right side. Boy, he was way off balance. Managed to get his bat on it. You don't see that happen too often because he has such a short, compact swing. He stays back until the last possible moment. But watch this swing right here. Way out in front, looked like he was looking for a pitch on the inside part of the plate. Key crossed him up through the sinker ball away and had Lansford off stride. He really becomes a tough out with two strikes on him. He shortens up that stroke even more. Ricky's having a tough time with Jimmy Key's move. Asking Dave McKay, you see the same thing I'm seeing? His move is as good as any in the game today. The reason is he's got a balance point when he lifts that front leg up. As long as that front foot does not cross the plane of the rubber, Key can go in either direction, home or first. That's the key for this move. That's fouled back out of play, so the count will stay a ball and two strikes. And Jimmy Key has worked on this move just the same way that an infielder might work on the double play because it's such an important part to his pitching. He becomes an added infielder on the mound. He's a good fielder, and now with his actual weapon of the pickoff move, he can really nullify a running game, even a guy like Ricky Henderson. Breaking ball, it's popped up. McGriff, he'll have a chance. He almost gets to it. Good effort. He had to battle the sun. Well, the sun and the wind blowing, bright sunny day, and that wasn't hit that high, so he didn't have a lot of time to run under it. You can see he's battling the sun. He doesn't have sunglasses on, and I'm a little surprised by that, but it just goes off his glove. I'm a bit surprised that Fred doesn't have the sunglasses out there today. I would think we might see him come out in the second inning with him. That might be too late. Mm -hmm. Inside two and two. This is some matchup right here. The Wiley left hander on the mound for the Blue Jays, Jimmy Key, going against Ricky Henderson and the leading hitter in the American League, Carney Lansford. Well, Key has been involved in some epic battles. I'll tell you about that in a moment. That's low. Last year, he faced Oakland just once and beat Dave Stewart one to nothing on a two hitter. And he faced only 29 hitters. You go back to 86, a memorable effort here. No decision in a 1 nothing 15 inning Blue Jay loss. He went 10, gave up just five hits. There goes Ricky Henderson. Carney Lansford hits it out to right field. Felix, two down. Well, some out of town oh, scores no, today. Minnesota behind the pitching of Anderson, shutting out Boston 7 to nothing. Milwaukee scored three runs in the fourth inning. And they're leading Chicago three to one. And we've got New York five and Kansas City three. Hawkins against Lee Brand in that one. Look at this game. California in the first have scored a pair. Lead Baltimore two to nothing. And that's a big game for Toronto and everybody else in the Eastern Division. Blue Jays six games back and they're getting ready to head to Baltimore for a big three game series. The first meeting of the year between these two clubs. And we'll be televising Tuesday night's game as well as Thursday's game from Baltimore. Now with two down, Mark McGuire, that first pitch was a ball. Ricky Henderson still at first base. Fergie, I watched the Angels play the Orioles last night, and the announcers, Brooks Robinson and Jim Palmer, the only thing they talked about was the Toronto Blue Jays. I'll show you what the Oriole players are thinking about. If the announcers are thinking about the Blue Jays, you know the players are thinking about them. The Blue Jays 11 and 3 in their last 14 games. That's why they're talking about them. And they're 13 of their last 16 on the road. They've been hot. New York beating Philadelphia 5 to 1. Mulholland, who was just obtained in that deal for Bedrosian, started for Philadelphia. Fernandez got the win for the Mets. 
Pittsburgh in the ninth, leading St. Louis 5-3. Smiley in for Pittsburgh. Houston and Atlanta 7-5. And the Expos, just a game and a half back, have a one nothing lead in the seventh inning. And it's Dennis Martinez against Sanderson. Get some great pitching in Montreal. Wouldn't it be great to see Montreal and Toronto in the World Series this year? I'll tell you what, if ever there was a chance, I think this could be the year. The thing the Expos have done is they've said, hey, let's uh, mortgage our future for this year yep. with that deal with Lansford. Langston, of course, not Lansford, but Mark Langston, he won Friday night. What's going to be interesting? Kevin Gross won yesterday. To see if they can sign Langston for next year. He's already said he wouldn't mind playing in San Diego or L.A., but money could change his mind. I tell you, aren't those ball players fickle? They'll do anything for money. <laughs> If I was in his position and going to make millions and millions of dollars, why not settle on L.A. or San, San Diego? Great weather, good ballparks. Who knows? Stay tuned. 2-2 Two -two pitch, it's popped up. Manny Lee will have a play in foul territory. There it is for the third out. So through one here at the Oakland Coliseum, the Blue Jays lead it one to nothing. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays Baseball on TSN. <laughs> okay, this is the big one, so get out there and give it your best. Now hit the showers. Shouldn't we play first? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yes, boys. And remember, giving your best means playing fair. That way, we are all winners. Can we have an autograph? Oh, I thought you'd never... Yay! Yay! <laughs> Shoppers Drug Mart reminds you to make fair play part of your game. It's, it's the, the only, only way, way to play. play. I sure have a lot of fun getting this thing dirty on the weekend. We both have to go to work on Monday. Come on, boy. I don't know where I'd be without Armor All Car Wash. It's great because it doesn't strip off the wax. And how about this cleaner? It gets all the crud off, and it's great for the interior. Armor All Car Wash and Armor All Car Cleaner. They do what household products can't because we're crazy about cars, too. It's not a car. It's a truck. Words to change the way you buy tires. All set. I'm trusting you on this one. Hey, General makes some of the best radials on the road. In the rain? Mm-hmm. I cart the kids around in this car. <laughs> Look, try a set of Generals on your car for 30 days. If you're not happy, I'll buy them back. Mm. We depend on this car. Just try them. Drive General Tires passenger car radios and take the 30-day challenge. See your participating dealer for details. We talked about Fred McGriff not having glasses. Manny doesn't have them on. And now he's shading his eyes with his glove. Fernandez behind him has his glasses down, and he's coming in behind Lee. But the veteran, Fernandez, has glasses. Manny Lee doesn't have glasses. Speaking of Tony Fernandez, he'll be our guest tonight on, or uh, after this ball game, on extra innings. And uh, he has been hot. As Mullenix swings and fouls off that first pitch, and he's a player who hasn't been. Hitting just 190 in his past 16 games. Rance with only 14 RBIs. He finished up last year with 48. Inside, evens it up with a ball and a strike. I think the DH area is a point of concern for this ball club. And the fact of the matter is they just signed Ozzie Virgil to a Syracuse contract. He is a right-handed batter, a catcher by trade, but they like the way he has swung, swung the bat in the past. He hasn't been playing at all this year. He's been at Phoenix working out with the rookie league team there. But for the time being, they're sending him to Syracuse. See if we can get that stroke together. But the D.A. spot is a concern for the Blue Jays. Two and two to Mullinix. Rance actually has been hitting the ball much better the last three weeks. Ground this... ball to Blankenship. He bobbles it, but makes the play. 
Blue Jays got four hits in the first inning, and Junior Felix came around to score. It was McGriff with the RBI. So with a one nothing lead here in the second inning, Blue Jays looking to win three out of four against the Oakland A's here in this series. Oh, what a boost that'll be heading into Baltimore. First time Baltimore and Toronto will have faced one another. Unusual quirk of the scheduling. Manny Lee has had five hits in this three-game series so far. Change up. Lee is a very aggressive hitter. He likes the fastball. And he likes it up, too, he likes it he? up. He turns that bat loose. Davis made a good pitch on the inside part of the plate, tied up Lee, and all he could do was foul it off. But Storm Davis missed 20 days with a hamstring problem. Another change up high. That's his first strikeout for Storm Davis. Davis came into this game this afternoon having walked 30 in just 50 innings pitched. Davis will not be able to throw the changeups up here all day long and get away with it, but this time he gets Manny Lee on a high changeup. But he's going to have to get that pitch down in the strike zone. High changeup can cause an awful lot of grief if you're a pitcher. Davis had a great year last year. He was 16 and 7 and was named the comeback player of the year by Sporting News. He had 10 consecutive winning decisions at one point from the middle of July to September. Two balls and a strike to Nelson Liriano. Liriano pops that one up. Phillips, now the shortstop. Gallego is over, makes the play. A three up, three down inning for the Blue Jays. And Storm Davis heads to the dugout, trailing one to nothing. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Play Walt Disney World Baseball Magic at all a and Dominion stores. This year, three ways to win. Win up to $10,000 instantly. Win trips for two to Orlando, Florida, home of Disney, MGM Studios. All trips provided by Treasure Tours. Or collect and win GMC trucks, microwaves and VCRs from Sharp, diamond rings from Ciro's, or sports watches from Citizen. This week's Baseball Magic features Dare Cookies. Taste that great Dare creamy taste, all Dare delicious. Garrett and Stew, quick, convenient cottage and camping dishes. The 100th staging of the Canadian Tennis Championships is a celebration of tennis. The world's top players battle at the Players Limited International held in Jerry Tennis Stadium, Montreal. Returning champion Yvonne Lendl, two-time winner John McEnroe, colorful Jimmy Connors, Yannick Noah, Andre Agassi, plus the Festival of Tennis features Garolitis, Nastasi, and Labor. Plan to attend. Tickets at all Ticketron outlets or call Ticketron at 514-288-2525. The Players Limited International, August 9th to the 20th. We now go to the draw for the A&P Dominion Stores trip for two to Walt Disney World. Here's your host, Frank Rispoli of Ralston Purina. It is my pleasure to draw the winner of a trip for two to Orlando, Florida, home of Walt Disney World, courtesy of Treasure Tours. And the winner is Kathy Harrison, Islington, Ontario. Kids day here at the ballpark, and lots of them are hanging around. A great afternoon, sunny, and there's a mother there who couldn't find a babysitter. Oh, what a cutie. <laughs> that guy's not paying attention. <laughs> hey, there's a great game going on here, buddy. Second inning, Steinbach, Phillips, and Blankenship will face the left-hander Jimmy Key. Terry Steinbach, who leads all the catchers in voting for the All-Star Game, and of course, he was the MVP in last year's All-Star Game. In a two-run homer off Doc Gooden, the difference in that game. Okay, he took an awful lot of heat for being on the team. 
some people didn't feel he believed he deserved to be on the team. And that the MVP. You notice what Key has done so far. He's pitched inside on these hitters, and that's what he has to do to be successful. Well, they've corrected a problem with his delivery and his landing foot, and that has enabled him to get the ball inside. Stein back. Luriano can't get a base hit. Boy, Terry Steinbach is hitting everything hard. He hit a pretty good pitch down and away from his sinker ball. You can see it's below the knees and really went down after it. He's a very confident hitter right now. Pretty important part of this team. You can see that protective shield on his helmet. He was hit in the face and still wears that a confidence thing. Feels much more comfortable and secure with that protective flap on there. The batter, the third baseman, Tony Phillips, who had three hits in yesterday's game. Phillips, a switch hitter. Pretty valuable guy in this ball club. Plays so many different positions. This TSN telecast is presented by authority of the Toronto Blue Jays and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of the Blue Jays. He lays a bunt down. Manny Lee's got to hurry. They get him. Well, that serves two purposes right there. First of all, it's a chance for a base hit. The third baseman, Lee, had to make a good defensive play. But by getting it down so well, down the third base line, he advances the runner. He's bunting for a base hit. But he hits it a little too hard. Lee charges hard and has a strong arm enough to throw out Phillips. But what Phillips did right there was he advanced the leadoff runner down to second base. And with one out, Terry Steinbach is in scoring position. For the hitter, Lance Blankenship. Blankenship out of the University of California. Made the Pacific Coast uh, or the All Pac 10 All Star team four years in a row, and no player has ever done that in the history of that conference. Pops it up in the infield. McGriff still doesn't have his glass. Oh, yes, yeah, he, he has. Does, his but glasses. he didn't flip him down. He forgot <laughs> that he had him on. He certainly could have used him there as he was having trouble right off the bat. Picking up the ball. Liriano came over to lend a hand. Look at him. He's kind of struggling right here. Now Liriano glances up, but McGriff failed to put his gun glasses down. Well, this inning he brought him with him. Next inning he'll flip him down. <laughs> <laughs> Takes him three to get going. <laughs> well, at least he's got him. That's, that's the big thing. <laughs> now we just get him to use him. Mike Gallego, the hitter. With two down here in the second inning, Jays leading one to nothing. Gallego this season hitting 400 off Blue Jay pitching. You know, a tough out. You know what happens in my mind? You go over all the big hitters in their lineup, and you forget about the Gallegos and the Phillips, and figure, well, I'll just throw them strikes and get ahead of them, and all of a sudden they're wearing you out. But you spend so much time on Lansford, McGuire, Ricky Henderson, Parker, Conseco's when he's healthy. It's you overlook these guys. Breaking ball and catches the corner. You know, by the fourth game of a four-game series, you sit back and say, hey, you know, Gallego's wearing us out. We better make some adjustments on him. He started 30 of the last 35 at shortstop in place of the injured Walt Weiss. Weiss will be back after the All-Star break. There's that inside corner that is so important to Jimmy Key's success. He was landing with his front foot a little bit too closed. It was throwing, causing him to throw across his body, and his arm couldn't be free enough to get the ball on the inside part of the plate to the right-handed hitters. Now, Widmar made some corrections, and he certainly has command of the inside corner lately. Way inside, two and two the count. Weiss underwent uh, knee surgery with torn cartilage. 
Take a look at this landing foot. If he gets it open far enough, that'll allow the front leg to clear out and free up his hips and let his arm come all the way through and get to that inside corner against the right-handed hitters. He has to establish that he can throw strikes inside. That's a pretty flat breaking ball right there. Key was underneath it, and it stayed up in the strike zone. Full count. Gallego's a good fastball hitter. I would be surprised to see Key throw him a fastball in this situation. Two outs, full count. He got it in on him. He threw a fastball and got it in on Gallego's hands. Now what do you do? I still think he's going to make him hit the sinker ball, something down and away from him. He has a base open. He doesn't want to give in to Gallego. We've talked about how hard he's hit the Blue Jays in this series. Stan he, Javier, the uh, number nine hitter in the, in the lineup, is in the on-deck circle. Outside, Gallego checked his swing. They appealed down to John Shulock, and he said no. So Gallego's on. That's the second walk given up by Key, and that's not like him. Well, he had the base open, and Gallego has been swinging the bat so well, he could go ahead and pinpoint it. If he went after a pitch on the outside, fine. But Jimmy Evans, the home plate umpire, looking for the appeal. No call down at first base. And the batter is Stan Javier, who is much better from the left side. He's only batting 192 from the right side, so I'm sure Key was aware of that. And he's had just four hits in his last 27 plate appearances. Easier guy to pitch to. That first one a strike. Remember when he came over in that Ricky Henderson deal that sent Henderson to the Yankees? Well, Javier is the only one left. Foul tip. And Key's way up in front. No balls, two strikes. This is where he can't let this out get away from him. Number nine batter in the lineup, two outs, runners at first and second, and you're ahead 0 and 2. You've got to retire this batter. Fastball that's high. Steinbach at second, Gallego at first, two down. Breaking ball. And Key is up a little bit with all of his pitches. I'd like to see him lowered about 10 inches, get down in the strike zone more. He's throwing that breaking ball up in the eyes of the batters where they can really get a good read on it. Especially with two strikes in this situation. He has the luxury of getting down in the strike zone as Al Widmar is watching closely to make sure that Key doesn't fall back into that bad habit of landing with a closed front foot. Widmar has such a great disposition, doesn't he? You never see him upset. And he studies those pitchers. He's done a great job over the years. He's been around too long yeah. to let one or two games upset him. <laughs> <laughs> Seen too many things happen over the years to get too excited about anything. Certainly done a great job getting these pitchers into that good delivery. Overcoming bad mechanical habits. Outside, two and two. This is Key's pitch right here. He's got to finish Javier on this pitch. He does not want to go to a full count with two outs to enable the base runners to be off with the pitch. He's got to be aggressive with this pitch. The pattern he's shown tells me he's going to try a fastball. Ground ball. Fernandez to Liriano for the force on Gallego. So Jimmy Key pitches his way out of trouble here in the second and through two. Jays still lead one to nothing. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Tim Conway's plugged in. Warmed up. And ready to play. Sort of. In his new comedy video, Dorf on Golf. As Dirk Dorf, athlete extraordinaire, Conway shows his form. I think I blew a tube on this. 
and shows you how his caddy, Leonard, improves his game. <laughs> Dorf shows you how to hit out of the rough and over and under a sand trap. He shows you how to warm up. How to lose your cool. Take a coin. Take a dime. Take a penny. Put it behind the ball. Pick up the Through ball. Through this special TV offer, you also get free Tim's book, You Slept Where Last Night? So get Dorf, because golf's too important to be taken seriously. Call 1-800-323-1000. That's 1-800-323-1000. Or rush $29.95 plus $4 shipping and handling to Dorf on Golf, P.O. Box 600, Station R, Toronto, Ontario, M4G 4E1. Call 1-800-323-1000. That's 1-800-323-1000. Sorry, no CODs. Jose Canseco, what kind of time schedule are you on to get back to the major leagues and play once again? Well, right now, we're not really on any certain time schedule. We're on a more or less day-to-day -day basis. I had in mind going to Modesto and playing tonight a game, but uh, I'm having trouble with my shoulder. Uh, it also happened the first time when I took the cast off for the operation. Uh, it seemed like I strained my shoulder. It was pretty weak because atrophy set in from wearing the cast for such a long period of time. So I think on this one, I'm going to wait a couple days till uh, all the pain is gone. Tony La Russa is concerned that Conseca will come back and say, hey, I'm ready to play. Get me in there. He knows he needs some more bats in the minor leagues before they put him back in the lineup. The Conseco now has missed 75 games, and the Oakland A's are still in top spot. Felix the hitter, ball and a strike. Felix is brushed back by Davis. He laid down a perfect two-strike bunt in the first inning and came around to score. Are you surprised with all the votes that Conseco has for the All-Star team and hasn't played a game yet? Well, not at all because of the format of the All-Star game now is the fans simply vote for it. They pick up the uh, ballot and they just punch out Conseco because of the year he had last year. Now, what do you think? If he's back in, in harness here and playing before the All-Star game and he's voted in. Let him play. I think the All-Star game is what the fans want to see on the field. They vote for the people to get in there and play. Let him play. The 2-2 pitch. Low and inside. Bo Jackson is right at the top of the outfielders in voting in Kansas City. And he had to leave the game yesterday with a hamstring problem. Remember last year he missed about six weeks with a hamstring problem. And I think now that's a crucial injury. Even more so possibly at this time than George Brett going out of the line. He might have the biggest hamstrings in the league. <laughs> Mike Flanagan called them ham ropes. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, in Anaheim will be the All-Star game. And the Blue Jays just coming from uh, Angel Stadium, where right now the Angels are leading Baltimore three to one. And they are in the third inning. Kurt McCaskill against Jeff Ballard. Come on, you Angels. Fernandez, the hitter. He's our guest on extra innings immediately following this game. So Felix on with a walk. McCaskill's due for a good outing after the Blue Jays roughed him up down there last week. Hitting in two thirds for seven hits and five runs, including two home runs by Tony Fernandez. And it was Felix on first base who got his very first major league hit off McCaskill, and that was a home run. Fernandez, our guest. Make sure you hang around for that one. He follows one out of play into the stands. Tony hesitates to take any credit for this turnaround. It's really gone hand in hand with his rise and success at the plate on that long hitting streak. He says, hey, the whole team is hitting better. It's not just me. And I think he's a major part of that. Well, in the last 14, the Blue Jays are 11 and 3, and he's had a 16 game hitting streak. Doesn't take a genius oh, to figure that out, does it? Uh, <laughs> there is no doubt about it. The most valuable player on this team. 
and always has been. 0-2 oh the count. There goes Felix. Pitches inside. Steinbach, no chance to throw. And Felix has his ninth stolen base. Steinbach was caught flat-footed. He didn't expect him to run right there in that count. And generally, you don't like to see an awful lot of runners run on an 0-2 pitch. But watch Felix head first slide. Remember, he was injured back in Toronto on a head first slide at home plate. Base hit off the glove of McGuire. Javier charges it. Felix will be held at third. So Tony Fernandez with nobody out and Felix at third gets the job done. Felix had to hold up to make sure McGuire didn't catch that line drive. So he could only go over to third base. But Fernandez with a one two pitch. Fights off a pretty good fastball, just goes off McGuire's glove. Well, you'll remember the throw by Javier to nail Kelly Gruber at third back in the first inning. And that would be another reason that they didn't test the arm of Stan Javier here. Once again, Storm Davis is on the ropes. Blue Jays lead it one to nothing. He has given up five hits. We are in the third inning. Gruber fouled back, and that will go out of play into the stands. In this situation, Kelly Gruber's 0-2 with runners at first and third. Now his thinking goes back to that number two spot in the lineup. He's simply trying to hit the ball on the right side, maybe shoot a ball in that big hole between first and second, trying to stay out of the double play. There's a big hole right there with McGuire holding Fernandez on. Shooting it to the right side. So now he becomes a defensive hitter. Just trying to stay alive. Put the ball in play on the right side of the field. That's the toughest ball for the infield to turn a double play on. And if he shoots one in that hole, he gets a base hit, drives in a run, and keeps this rally going. Ground ball could be two. Blankenship to Gallego. Double play. The run scores. And it is two to nothing for Toronto. Well, Gruber doesn't get an RBI, but Felix is the catalyst once again as he gets on with a walk, steals second, and then scores on this double play ball. Blankenship with the underhand toss to the shortstop Gallego, who really turns it nicely. Very academic double play, but the Blue Jays played their second run. McGriff takes a fastball for a strike. Freddie, an RBI single in the first inning. Two to nothing, Toronto leading. Blue Jays with a chance to move back to 500 today. They're one game under. Six back of Baltimore, and the Orioles losing three to one in the third to the Angels. Davis has been ahead of the Blue Jay hitters almost all day long, and he's got McGriff 0 2. He'll move that fastball all around. He has pretty good command of the inside part of the plate. Very much like Jimmy Key. Ground ball. Phillips backhands it. Now sets and throws. They get McGriff. Boy, he looked like he was safe. Tony Phillips, a very versatile player, and today he's over at third base. John Shulock, the first base umpire, calls McGriff out. But Tony Phillips, with a fine defensive play, using that strong arm, stops, plants himself, and guns it across the infield. Watch McGriff as it's bang, bang at first. He had it beat. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Home Hardware, we've poured everything into our new Wood Shield exterior stands. They're specially formulated for our harsh Canadian climate. Welcome home. 
Wood Shield stays provide quality protection against fading, cracking, and decay. And just look at your choice. 85 beautiful colors. Home hardware. Every Chevy Lumina has standard Scotch Guard for the seats. Look over there! So spills clean up like water off a duck's back. The new 1990 Lumina from Chevrolet, the world's most successful cars. Esso would like to shed some light on the subject of gasoline. Not all gasolines are right for your car. Some can cause engine knock, even engine damage. Now there's new Esso Supreme with added deposit control. A premium gasoline specially formulated to provide smoother burning, more power and acceleration. In short, regular gasoline can't hold a candle to new Esso Supreme. Hi, I'm Chris Seedens. Join me and J.J. Jardine for the 1989 Canadian National Darts Championship from St. Hyacinth, Quebec, Sunday, June 25th on TSS. For all you armchair umpires, this is a call you could make either way. Let's have a look at it. See the foot, the ball. Now, what do you think? <laughs> That's why they don't have instant replay in baseball. You really can't tell on this thing. And the only thing Shulak can go on is the sound of the ball going into McGuire's glove before McGriff hits the base. He has the advantage of that split second little sound, the glove and the ball coming together. But seriously, looking at that replay, you could call it either way. No one argued that call. Nope. Ricky Henderson, the hitter. And Key is ahead, no balls and two strikes. Henderson walked, and he was left stranded at first in the first inning, and that just uh, tells you what a, a great move or how he respects the move of Jimmy Key to first. He wasn't getting much of a lead there. Great base runners like Henderson really study the opposing pitchers, and he knows that Key is one of the toughest in the American League. Well, I think to steal off Key, you simply have to guess. And if you guess right, you'll make it. This is going to be a tough play. Manny Lee. There's no chance. Henderson slides it first. That'll be a base hit. Uh, it's called a swinging bunt. There was a lot of questions about whether or not Henderson would fit into this ball club. Manny Lee charged hard, but Henderson with a dive. Lee knows he's got to bare hand this ball. The only chance he has, he doesn't come up with it. And watch Henderson in the background sliding to first base. La Russa did a lot of investigating about whether or not Henderson would be a problem. He found out that he would fit right in. And boy, I like the way that Henderson has come out here to California and fit right into Tony La Russa's ball club. Henderson with that head first slide. So he's on for the second time today. Let's see if he gets a better read off Jimmy Key this time. Dave Henderson, the hitter. He flied out to Mosby, a fly ball back to the warning track in the first inning. Boy, if you have an overthrow at first base today with a guy like Henderson, you're talking about third base at least and maybe home. So much room down there. The right fielder and the second baseman have to converge in foul territory on an overthrow. He's got a good lead there. Dave Henderson checking out signs down at third base with Renee Latchman to see whether or not Henderson has the green light. As a hitter, it's always helpful to know what that runner is going to do so you're not distracted by the movement at first base. Another fly ball, center field. Mosby drops the glasses. He's got it. Henderson tags up, but Mosby gets the throw right on the money. Henderson, Ricky Henderson and Mosby grew up in Oakland, so they're always trying to test one another. Henderson saw the ball deep to center field and said, hey, I'm going to go over and test my buddy out, see if he's paying attention to me. Goes back to the bag, tags up, and fakes a break to second base to make sure that Mosby was on his toes. But the shaker in center and Ricky Henderson 
on the Oakland Ball Club always try to one up each other. Carney Lansford, the designated hitter. One down. He's popped up. Liriano, it might be a tough play for him. Look out, here comes Felix. He's got it. Two down. Now I think Henderson just has to gamble. Take a shot, get out there, take a lead, and move on Jimmy Key's first movement. There's two outs. There's no sense in him being stranded at first base again. We caught Dave McKay whispering there. <laughs> Let's see if he goes ahead and gambles, takes a shot. The only thing that might keep him at first base is this guy right here. McGuire popped up to Manny Lee in the first, so he's 0 for 1. 15 homers. I would think he'd go on the first pitch. If you're going to go, just go on Jimmy Key's first movement. Just guess. Not going. Henderson is frustrated. He can't figure out Key. Vince Coleman in St. Louis set a record last night for 40 consecutive stolen bases. He stole three in the ballgame. That man right there, Ricky Henderson, ranked fourth in the all-time stolen base list. He throws over. Henderson dives in. He's back okay. He was hung up that time. He had a little bit too much weight going towards second base. And when Keith had that hesitation move, he shot. Watch how Ricky's just hung up out there. Doesn't move back quickly enough. And now just barely gets back in time. He was leaning. The 0 1 pitch for a strike. Junior Felix stole on an 0 2 pitch against the A's. Blue Jays have done a pretty good job on Mark McGuire. He's had just three hits in 21 plate appearances this year. Of course, one of them being a grand slammer off Tom Hankey. Ball and two strikes, two down. Curve ball that he hangs and McGuire nails it foul. Anderson has just been nullified today. Been on twice. Hasn't been able to steal. Strikes him out. The first strikeout for Jimmy Key. So through three innings here at the Oakland Coliseum in the final game of this four-game series, the Blue Jays lead it two to nothing. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. The greatest golfer of all time, the legendary Bobby Jones. Back in the 1930s, Warner Brothers produced 18 instructional films featuring Bobby Jones and some of the top Hollywood stars of the day. Most of the prints were either lost or damaged. In 1986, a set of perfectly preserved masters was found. The Jones family then asked CyberVision to make these priceless films available to the public once again. Sports Illustrated has called this collector's edition the best motion picture instructionals ever made of any sport. I've always thought and if a game was worth playing at all, it was worth making some effort to play it correctly. Order Volume 1, The Full Swing. Or order Volume 2, From Tee to Green. Just call toll-free 1-800-666-4660. Each video is $85 plus $350 shipping and handling. 1-800-666-4660. Or send check or money order to I-Level Video, Post Office Box 7, Port Credit, Ontario. Please specify VHS or Beta. And sorry, no CODs. Fourth inning here in Oakland. Blue Jays lead it two to nothing. It was Junior Felix who led off the game in the first inning with a bunt single. 
And Gruber singled. And then RBI single by Freddie McGriff gave the Jays their first run. And then Felix in the third inning walked, stole second, and came in on a double play ball hit by Kelly Gruber. So it is 2 0 for Toronto as Ernie Witt leads it off here in the fourth inning. Witt singled back in the first. And over the long haul, the past 37 games, Ernie Witt has hit 330. He's done a pretty good job this year. I remember last season, Buck, he was hitting nothing but line drives for the first half of the season. It seemed like he couldn't buy a base hit. Then he really caught fire the second half. Well, it all got started back in Chicago with a series. Hit a couple home runs in that series, and from then on, he's really been swinging well. A sellout crowd here at the Coliseum today. Outside, evens the count at two and two. So with California leading five to one, it's good news for all Blue Jay fans. Witt fouls off another one. The Labatt's player of the game for Toronto will receive something new under the sun. Canada's new Prima Shot, the world's first automatic camera with detachable infrared remote control. Compact with the latest technology and the remarkable removable remote control. As well, an amateur baseball team will be the guest of Canada at a future Blue Jays game. Took a little off that pitch, and it's a full count now to the catcher, Ernie Witt. Blue Jays 16 and 6 in the month of June. Still six games to go. Ground ball to Blankenship, the second baseman, to McGuire. Blankenship, a young player, called up from the minor leagues. Spent the season at Tacoma last year, and they brought him up at the tail end of the season. But he's a pretty versatile young man. He's a guy with lots of speed. Stole 40 bases at Tacoma last year. Mosby in his second at bat. Fouls off that first pitch. He flied out to Ricky Henderson and left back in the first inning. And that was with McGriff at second and Witt at first. The Shakers had just two hits in his last 22 plate appearances. It has been a struggle for him this year. You got to believe that his back was bothering him during that stretch when he wasn't swinging the bat well. Then he took nine days off. Says he's totally recovered now. Just hope it'll hold up. Line to left field. Henderson back. Got the track. He's got it. We've seen Ricky Henderson make four outstanding defensive plays in this ballpark since coming back to the Oakland A's. Right here, Mosby hits a sinker ball down and away from him. He really got down on the ball and got a lot of backspin. Right at the end here, the ball takes off on Henderson. He had to speed up, and he finally has to jump to make the catch. Well, they try to one-up each other, and Anderson got that one. Mullenix, who grounded out in the second, is 0 for 1. You know, the A's have lost just one homestand all season long, and that was to the Chicago White Sox. Three up, three down. So we head to the bottom of the fourth here in Oakland. Blue Jays leading 2 to nothing. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays Baseball on TSN. Hemlo is gold country, led by Naranda's exciting new Golden Giant Mine, the lowest cost gold producer in the country. Naranda, it means mines, forests, oil and gas, manufacturing. It means new ideas, new discoveries by the 34,000 Canadians who are Noranda, a very resourceful company. 
There it is, Bill McGuire. Who's gonna go first? Molly Hagan says there's ghosts. Don't there. be crazy. I'll check it out. S.O. knows it's a big decision to go first. I'll go first. I'm not afraid. The unknown can be a place filled with adventure. Still, you walk into it for the challenge of being the one who says, I'll go first. From the Oakland Coliseum, there's a young man who might one day want to grow up and be a major leaguer. And I'm not making a comment on that one. <laughs> it's, it's your turn, Buck. <laughs> it's great to have single cameramen, huh? Bottom of the fourth inning, Terry Steinbach steps in. <laughs> Jimmy Key has allowed two base hits. Steinbach has one of them, and Ricky Henderson has the other. Both singles. Fly ball, center field. Mosby's got a long way to go. He can't get to it. It drops in between them, and Steinbach has his second hit. Stay tuned at the end of the game for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Mita. At Mita, we think a copier company that makes TVs, CDs, VCRs, stereos, and bicycles. Doesn't sound like a very good idea. Mita, or we make a great copiers. Tony Phillips, the hitter, with Steinbach on at first. Blue Jays leading, two to nothing. Key continues to pitch in tight. California now is up their lead to seven to one over Baltimore. And it looks like they're still in the third inning. Ground ball could be two. Liriano to Fernandez, and he turns it beautifully. That's the biggest play for the defense on this trip. They have been able to turn the double play. Liriano with a nice, easy flip. He's patient, knows he has a lot of time. Steinbach bearing down on Fernandez. He jumps out of the way and gets Phillips easily at first base. Didn't they have three of them on Friday night in our last telecast? The pitcher's best friend, the double play ball. After giving up a base hit to Steinbach, the runners are erased on Tony Phillips' double play ball in the second. Lance Blankenship. He popped up in the second inning, so he's 0 for 1. Well, it sure looks like this Blue Jay pitching staff is back on track during this road series. You know, I think the general consensus had to be if the Jays could go on this trip and come back at 500, in other words, five and five on the trip, they'd be happy with that. But now they're not going to settle for that. Hopefully. This is a different ball club. Yeah. The attitude now is, hey, Night we're going to win this thing. It's nothing to do with, oh, let's get through this thing. And this guy right here has had a lot to do with that. He came over as the manager and said, listen, fellas, you're better than you're playing, and you know it. So get out there and give me a little more effort, and we're going to win this thing. Blankenship away out in front. Follows that into the stands. It's two and two, the count. But you keep hearing around the baseball circles that the Eastern Division is weak. Nobody stands out. In my mind, talent-wise, the Blue Jays stand out. 
I think they have the best talent in the division. Well, you've said that all along. Another fly ball. Mosby in center field. Broke back. He's coming in, and he's got it. So a three-up, three-down inning for Jimmy Key and the Blue Jays. And through four here in Oakland, the Jays lead it two to nothing. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Wait a second. Just hold it. Life's fast, no question, lots of hassles. My philosophy? Food shouldn't be a hassle. Pizza Pops, they fill that gap fast. When it's fast and good, take it slow and easy. New Pizza Pops, more than just a snack. A philosophy. Pizza Pops, inhale one today. McCain Super Fries, deep fried flavor and crispness from your oven. For the strong, silent type. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on for it won't be long till you're gonna need somebody to lean on. Chevy and GMC, the trucks more people lean on. Well, right-hander Storm Davis has really struggled through the first three innings, but he's managed to hold the Blue Jays to just two runs as we go to the fifth inning. Davis has given up five hits. Manny Lee struck out in the second. Blue Jays really had Davis on the ropes back in the first. But Stan Javier, a single by McGriff to right field, nailed Kelly Gruber at third. And that's with Felix already scoring. That was a big out. It looks as though Davis has really settled in now, taking advantage of Javier's good throw. Davis spent five years with Baltimore, where he was 16 games over 500. And then in 87, with San Diego, he was 2-7 and seven before he was traded to Oakland. And last year, of course, was his best in the major leagues. He was 16-7. and seven. Pitched over 200 innings, too. So Manny goes down for the second time. He got the sinker ball down and away, and Manny Lee just couldn't lay off of it, and Storm Davis made a pretty good pitch. That's the second time he's got Manny Lee on strikes. But he had shown him that high fastball, and then he changed the plane, went down and away with the sinker ball, and got the third baseman. The hitter, the second baseman, Nelson Luriano, for a strike. Nelly had his average well over 300. Now he squares to butt, takes a strike. But he has been struggling at the plate lately. Against Oakland this season, hitting well under 200. And Manny's average has dropped down to around 280. And Nelly's average, I should say. Fly ball into the stands out of play. Both Davis and Key have been very aggressive, especially to this type of the lineup. Right at the bottom. Go ahead, get ahead of them. Go right after them. Economize on the pitches. Curveball beaten foul. Mike Squires will return it to play. 
It's incredible to think, though, that the Oakland A's still lead their division by two over Kansas City when they've had Dennis Eckersley, who's missed 27 games. Canseco, this is the 75th game, and he hasn't played this season. Bob Welsh, he'll be back in a week. And Weiss won't be back till after the All-Star break. California two and a half back, and they are leading. Baltimore seven to one in the fourth inning. And Kansas City trailing New York five to four in the ninth. Lariano hits it to Ricky Emerson and left. Two down. The reason that the Oakland A's have played so well is the depth. Even though they've got Welch down, Storm Davis comes back off an injury and starts to pitch well. Eckersley, of course, there's some talk that he might be a little more serious than they'd like to admit, but they've had so much depth in the bullpen that they've managed to withstand all these ad adverse injuries. Well, with Cattaray and Plunk gone now, that's going to hurt them, I think. The two players that they gave up, along with Polonia, and the Ricky Henderson deal. I don't think it'll hurt them as much as they'll benefit from having Ricky Henderson on the team. And that's what made the decision. The bullpen is not as strong as it was last year, but the offense might be a little better. There's a brush back pitch with two strikes. I go back to the statement that Doug Rader made while we were in Anaheim. He felt that the strength of, or one of the strengths of the Oakland Ball Club was middle relief. Catches the corner as Felix backs out. He didn't like the call. But three up, three down as Storm Davis now has struck out three. Storm Davis brushed him back on an 0-2 pitch, then comes right back to the inside corner. Jimmy Evans, the umpire, rings him up. And Felix is caught looking. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Over 48,000 fans listening to La Bamba in the background, and they're having themselves a pretty good afternoon here. Although their club, the Oakland A's, are trailing the Toronto Blue Jays 2 to nothing. Bottom of the fifth inning, Gallego, Javier, and Ricky Henderson to face the left-hander Jimmy Key, who has allowed just three hits through the first four. He has struck out one. He has walked two. And all three hits have been singles. At first pitch, a ball to Gallego. This guy has been a tough out all season long for the Toronto Blue Jays. There's a wave. That's the noise in the background. <laughs> Let's cancel that wave out. There's a strike. Well, they've got to have something to do here this afternoon. The wave ball club busters. hasn't done too much. Let's call in wave busters. Have you seen that movie yet, Ghostbusters? Two? No, I sure haven't. You haven't gone to see Batman yet, have you? Jose Canseco thinks he should have been Batman. I'm not, you know, Buck, I'm not looking for a date or anything. I mean, you know. <laughs> Gallego draws a walk. So Jimmy Key, in all four innings, the leadoff hitter has been on, or all five now, let's make it. Henderson walked in the first, Steinbach singled in the second, and then Henderson singled in the third, Steinbach singled in the fourth, and now Gallego walks here in the fifth. Three walks for Jimmy Key today. Coming into the game, he'd walked only 10 all year long. ball for a strike. Baltimore has scored a couple of runs. It is seven to three California in the fourth. Deep to left. 
Kroemer back and he's out of here. A tie ball game. That's the 10th home run that Jimmy King has given up this season, a team high. He had thrown too many balls up and out over the plate, and Javier gets on this one. The ball really carries in the daytime here in Oakland, and he shoots it over the left field wall, his first home run of the year. Wouldn't you know it? A two-runner that ties up the game, and Javier doesn't get to do the big Oakland A's bash too often, but he gets to do it with the big guy, Dave Parker, right there. He's made a good throw today, and now he's chipped in some offense. at that home run swing. Much better batter from the left side generally, but he turns and gets extension on this ball and shoots it out of here to tie the game. Now Henderson hits one to right, base hit. Ricky Henderson, two for two with a walk today. He gets this ball on Henderson's fist, but he's just strong enough to fight it off. Shoots it into right field, and all of a sudden, Jimmy Key has got himself some problems with Henderson on. Nobody out. Two runs already in. Tie score at two all. And Dave Henderson has flied the center twice today. I see where Steve Jones has won the Canadian Open at 17 under. Picked up a cool 162,000. Not bad for four days. There he guesses and steals. Didn't waste any time this time, Buck. He'd been trying to read Jimmy Key all day long, and this time, the third time he's been on base, he went on Key's first move. He was just going all the way. If Key throws the first, he's out. He was gambling, but in a tie situation, Henderson can go ahead and gamble. Which throw is just too late, as Henderson got a great jump off Jimmy Key and slides hard into second base. So with a go-ahead run down at second, count a ball and no strikes to Dave Henderson. Henderson hits it to right. Felix, the throw is wide of the plate. Henderson scores. The A's lead it three to two. This is a ball, Buck. I thought in right field, Felix might have had a chance. It was hit so sharply to right field. Henderson really staying on the ball. Henderson's great speed. Ricky around third. If the throw's on the money, it might be close, but it was so far up the line that McGriff had to cut it off. So Dave Henderson breaks out of his mini slump and puts the A's ahead with a solid single to right field. Now there'll be some activity down in the Blue Jays' bullpen as Pat Borders goes down. And Dwayne Ward appears as though he's going to start throwing. The batter is Carney Lansford. Takes a ball. Dave Henderson at first. And as we said, Dave Henderson has been in a slump. Well, there's a team he used to play for, the Boston Red Sox, and they'll be in Friday, June the 30th for a four-game series at the fabulous Sky Dome. Took a little off that pitch. And he got the ball to sink. Something that he hasn't done most of the day. He's had entirely too many fly balls. Been up a little bit out over the plate. Javier finally cashed one in and knocked it out of the ballpark. But they certainly could use that double play ball now. Well, that walk has come back to hurt Jimmy Key in this inning. He has given up three walks so far, but a leadoff walk to Gallego, a two-run home run by Javier, and then back-to-back -back singles by the Henderson boys. Two and one the count to Connie Lansford. Lansford, the leading hitter in the American League, is much better out over the plate. You try to crowd him, try to keep the ball in on his fists. You can throw him down better than up. He likes the ball up, out over the plate. You can see he chokes up slightly on the bat. That ball gets away from McGriff. Dave Henderson is being waved to third. They might even see.
send it now. They're going to hold him at third. Witt is being backed up by Jimmy Key. And, oh, that was a big one. Had Jimmy Key not been over there covering, Dave Henderson would have scored. And Tony Fernandez might have hurt himself trying to come over from his shortstop spot. You can see him pointing to his ankle. Watch Henderson get in front of McGriff. His body blocked him away. The throw is up the line towards second. Henderson has good speed. Look at him. Look at the coach Latchman right now. All he's doing is watching Latchman, the third base coach, goes all the way to third base, and now he's on his own. Picks up the ball. McGriff goes into the runner, and the ball goes all the way down to the bullpen. We talked about it earlier. Look at Henderson hustling over, picking up his coach right now. Now he looks back to see where the ball is himself. So Jimmy Key will be charged with an error. Two balls and a strike to Carney Lansford. He pops it up in the infield. Lariano drops the glasses. He's going to have a tough play as Felix takes over. Whenever you can have an outfielder call an infielder off, that's a great play by Felix because he knew Lariano was battling the sun and he had a better angle on it. It's out in front of him, whereas it's directly over Liriano's head. So Felix came in and called him up, and his momentum is carrying him towards the infield. Look at Liriano battle the sun. Now he gives way to Felix, and Felix's momentum takes him towards the infield, and he has the play entirely in front of him. Now Mark McGuire's the hitter. With one down, Dave Henderson down at third. The defense is halfway in. If they get a hot shot on the infield, they might try to cut the run off at the plate. Inside for a ball. Now they've backed up up the middle. The corners, McGriff and Lee are in, but Fernandez and Liriano up the middle are playing deep. They'll concede a ground ball up the middle for a run. You know, we talk about all the injuries that uh, the Oakland A's have, and even Mark McGuire was out for a couple of weeks with a herniated disc. But LaRusse has done a great job of jockeying the different players around. He's got those versatile players like Phillips, Javier, Gallego, Hubbard. They can all do so many things. And that'll go out of play. So Jimmy Key is ahead on the count. A ball and two strikes to Mark McGuire. He struck out McGuire last time up with a high fastball. He really ran that ball across the letters and got McGuire on that good fastball. Well, that's the book on Mark McGuire. The thing about McGuire now, he can shorten up and try to hit the ball on the right side, going away from his strength, but just trying to score this run. That pitch is low, two and two. The Jays have always pitched so well against McGuire. Gaston aware that his pitcher Jimmy Key has struggled a bit and he has Dwayne Ward down in the bullpen. Gets it. And that'll bring up the catcher Terry Steinbach. Terry Steinbach, you're swinging a hot bat right now. You've really had a great year this year. Anything different that you've done this year? Actually, as far as my swing goes, no. I think uh, one of the things that definitely helped me was the year I had last year. Uh, I got off to such a poor start and had to learn how to deal with that. And uh, I spent a lot of time working on my mechanics during last year, staying with my work habits. And it taught me that if you have any adversity, such as slumps, or if you're going very, very good, that you should continue to do the same thing. So I spend a lot of time doing what I call my, my mechanics, you know, hitting some balls off a tee and taking my batting practice. And I think most of all, mentally, you know, I feel that that uh, I can overcome any adversity that, that they're going to throw my way. So I think it's more so just a, a matter of being more confident up there and, and being more relaxed. And that's caused him to have his average up to 323. He talked about his struggle last year going into the All-Star break, batting just 217 with 19 RBIs. Today, he's perfect on the day. He singled twice off Jimmy Key. And once again, he's in a situation where he can drive in a run with Dave Henderson down at third base and two outs facing Jimmy Key. Cito Gaston was out to check with Jimmy Key, but he's back in the dugout and we're ready to go. 
three to two Oakland leading with three big runs here in the fifth inning. Just inside. That's something that Gaston has done quite often since he's taken over as the manager. He's gone out to the mound and had a talk with the pitcher. I think it's a confidence builder going out there and saying, listen, I know you still got good stuff. Just reach back and get this next out for me. Fly ball left field. Kelly Gruber, who's out there, will draw a beat on this one, and he's got it for the third out. So the Oakland A's, three hits and a walk, and a Jimmy Key error. Score three runs and take a three to two lead. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. All the tire between you and the road is this about the width of your finger. Here's where you need exclusive Bridgestone technology designed on the principle of a moving tire, not one that's standing still, which means Bridgestone builds more than tires that perform. Bridgestone builds confidence. So wherever you drive, remember this and remember Bridgestone. Available at Bridgestone Tire Retailers and Kmart Automotive Service Centers. Jack Nicklaus for the first time reveals his secrets for a winning game on this exclusive two-hour video cassette. Jack Nicklaus, Golf My Way. The rules allow 14 different clubs. Fortunately, you only have to learn one swing. But the hard fact is, that grip, aim, posture, and ball position account for at least 80% of good shot making. Does this shot scare you? Well, it really shouldn't. Let me show you the short game. Chipping. This technique is a game in itself. Putting is no different than any other golf shot. This Golf My Way series is the one I've always hoped and planned to do just once in my lifetime. And I'm very excited about the way it's turned out. Order now. Only $89.95 each, plus $350 shipping and handling. Call 1-800-666-4660. Please specify VHS or beta. Or send check or money order to I-Level Videos, P.O. Box 7, Port Credit, Ontario. Sorry, no CODs. 6 hits for the Oakland A's, 5 for the Blue Jays, as the A's lead it 3-2. to two. Stan, Stan Javier, a big two-run homer in the fifth inning. Fernandez, Gruber, and McGriff here in the sixth for Toronto. Fernandez, one for two. Off the right-hander, Storm Davis. The Blue Jays had Davis on the ropes in the first inning, but he battled back and has done a pretty good job. He's kept the A's in the ball game long enough to give them a lead. I think that's the experience that Davis has. He's a veteran enough not to panic. They had him on the ropes in the first, but he settled in pretty well. Fernandez slaps it to the shortstop. Gallego rifles it across and gets in. Gallego has been very steady. Davis got the leadoff batter, Fernandez, who just slapped it too hard. He got too much of it. He'll be our guest on extra innings. Totally a little upset with himself for hitting that ball just a little too hard. Give us a call, collect 445-1811. Gruber the hitter. Gruber one for two, a single, and he is hit into a double play. Good breaking ball there. Davis has been very aggressive today, coming right at the Blue Jay hitters. You know, for all you fans, on Tuesday night when we televise our first game out of Baltimore this season, it'll be Mike Flanagan at 4-3 and three against Jay Tibbs, who is 4-0. and oh. And then on Wednesday night, John Cerruti, 3-3 three and three against Brian Holton at 2-5. and five. And then on Thursday, Frank Wills is the scheduled starter. I rather suspect that the Blue Jays might go with Steve. But Dave Schmidt will pitch for Baltimore. And they have the advantage of an off day. And Steve, like we mentioned earlier, threw the ball well yesterday. Just was victimized by four Blue Jays errors defensively. Maybe they'll move Dave up because he has thrown the ball well. Well, certainly much better than Frank Wills has. Wills uh, Last had a seven-run lead, and he couldn't stroke. protect it.
Gruber lines it to Blankenship, the second baseman. Two down. This has been a playoff atmosphere during, throughout this whole four-game series. The Jays taking game one and two of the series. Dave Stewart came back to put the A's on the left side of the tally sheet. Fred McGriff drove in the first run of the ball game. But I don't know if you'd be too far off if you said this might be a preview of the American League Championship Series. Well, let's hope it is. McGriff swings through that one. He's homered off uh, Dave Stewart and Snyder this year. Of course, that uh, home run he hit off Snyder was a game winner Thursday night in the 13th inning. Jays won it 4-2. to two. So McGriff goes down and strikes, and that's number four for Storm Davis. And he has settled in nicely as Davis is now retired 12 in a row. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now those four young mop tops from England. Come on, let's really hear it for them. Oh, when you're smiling, say Labatt's Blue. That's one small step for man. Here's a shot. Right by the door. Now, when you pull into an Esso station, you're going to get something new. Something with improved cleaning power. Something that is designed for better performance. A premium gasoline. A premium gasoline that can help deliver peak performance in cars that demand more than regular. Announcing the launch of new Esso Supreme gasoline. Pitch the sixth here for the Toronto Blue Jays. He's four and seven with five saves. He had three great innings of relief Thursday in Toronto's 4-2 victory. No hits, struck out five and walked one. This pitching change is brought to you by Duracell, the one that lasts. Watch, only one of these kittens will outlast Ralph. <laughs> The copper top battery, the one that lasts. You know, Ward teamed up with Hernandez the other night uh, to really give the Blue Jays a chance to, to win that ball game in extra innings. Uh, he just looked terrific. He really did. One of his better outings. Dwayne Ward, in your opinion, how has Cito, Cito Gaston handled the bullpen? I think so far being new, I, you know, I feel like he's really handled them pretty well as a as a way of not getting everybody tired out there in the bullpen. You know, we've had some long in games these last couple of days, which has sort of ran our bullpen ragged. But before that, he's done you know as good, as good a job as anybody. That's probably the most difficult part for a fellow like Cito Gaston, who has been the hitting instructor, is learn how to move the pitchers in and out of the ball game. And I think he's done a fine job working closely with Al Widmar. And they've got the bullpen throwing as good as they have all year long. Phillips, Blankenship, and Gallego to face the right-hander, Dwayne Ward. And Ward, this is his 34th appearance of the season. Inside for a ball. Phillips sacrificed Bud in the second and hit into a double play in the fourth. Jimmy Key will not get his eighth win here today, but he does stand to be the losing pitcher. And if that happens, that'll even up his record at seven and seven. 
There you see Ward just third in the American League in appearances. Chuck Prim and, and Rogers from Texas. This has been a problem for Dwayne Ward. Walks. First batter he's faced. He's had trouble giving up walks, walking a guy. Not even close, and the leadoff batter is on for the Athletics. Dwayne Ward at the start of the season, the bullpen was a strength of this ball club. You went through some rough times, but once again, looks like all three of you, Henke, Wells, and yourself, are really throwing the ball well right now. Well, I think right now it's just a effect of us getting back on track, and it's, you know, once you get back on track, kind of relieving is a hot and cold situation, and early in the season we were all cold, and then, you know, a couple of us picked it up, and the other one started following along with us, but, uh, I mean, early in the season it's just it's too early to say, you know, the bullpen's gone, gone down when, you know, it's just the first month of the season. I'll tell you, we saw Tom Henke pitch here the other night, and he threw as hard as he has thrown in a long, long time. They are both throwing well, Ward and Henke. And Blankenship is up here to sacrifice. He squared around, took a curveball low for ball one. Phillips on first, has good speed. There he goes. And Blankenship hits it to right field. Felix is there. Phillips will get back to first. One down. The Labatt's player of the game for Oakland will receive a complete range of shaving products from Remington, the grooming company, including the Remington Ultimate Shaver, the shaver that shaves as close as a blade or your money back. Just one of the precision line of grooming products for men and women from Remington. The batter will be Mike Gallego, the shortstop. Gallego walked in the second and walked again in the fifth. La Russa showed bunt with Blankenship, then took it off and put the hit and run on. Gallego is an outstanding hit and run guy himself. Let's see if they go back to it. Ward's going to check the runner at first. Phillips back with a dive. They have the luxury of a one-run lead in this part of the lineup. They can go ahead and gamble. Good contact hitter Gallego. Good speed at first in Phillips. A strike. Gallego looks down to Latchman, the third base coach. He flashes the signals. Uh, a former manager. Remember Jimmy Key's throw to first base. To hold Dave Henderson close, got away from McGriff, went all the way to the wall, allowed Henderson to go around to third base, but he was stranded there. Good breaking pitch, had Gallego waving it. You talk about Jimmy Key, all his, his success this year has been against teams in the West Division. He was 6-1 and one against the West coming into this afternoon's ball game. And just one and five against the East. And he was coasting along with a two nothing lead until the fifth inning. The Oakland A's erupted for three. Ward takes his time. Here's the 0 2 pitch, strikes him out. Two down. Ward's velocity has been well over 90 miles an hour in the last month or so. You can see a high fastball with good movement just over matches Gallego. Ward has averaged just over a strikeout an inning. Ward already has a loss against Oakland this season. Javier now turns to the left side of the plate. He homered from the right side in the fifth inning. There's no doubt about it. He hit it pretty good, too, off key. He went around.
Well, he's not noted for his home run power, but he got a hold of that fastball from Key. Now he's a better average hitter from the left side. Let's see if he can put it in play with two down. Boy, Ward is just he's blowing humming, that fastball he? today. His control caused him problems early in the year. He was just all over the place. Wasn't spot the ball. Had to come in there when the count was in the hitter's favor and was hit around pretty hard. But it's been a different story here lately. Control and confidence. And he really had tough luck. He lost some tough games when he really wasn't throwing that bad and then he kind of questioned himself a little bit. Pitched defensively from time to time and that led to some rough outings. The one two pitch ground ball McGriff he'll turn around step on the bag to get Javier. So a good inning turned in by Dwayne Ward as we go through six now three to two the Oakland A's lead it. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Behold the dark ages of fitness but now Introducing Recline Rider. It's comfort on wheels, and you won't get as sore or cramped as you would hunched over a stationary bike. Experts agree legs working in line with a heart provide better circulation while exercising. Focus on muscles in your legs and buttocks. Firm up fast. Burn calories, too. Recline Rider has quality features you'd expect to find only on the most expensive reclining cycles. The comfortable seat adjusts for different heights. A wide range of tension adjustments provides for constant challenge, and Recline Rider's precision-weighted flywheel makes pedaling smooth. Get unmatched quality for just three easy payments of $63, and that is a comforting thought. So if you're inclined to fitness, call toll-free now. Order Recline Rider by calling 1-800-543-1005. We'll bill your credit card three easy payments of just $63 each, and we won't bill the last payment till you've tried Recline Rider for 60 days. The total price, just $179 plus $10 shipping. Full payment orders accepted, or call 1-800-543-1005. The place to be is TSN. You'll be front row when the best of the majors take the field. Be a part of it all. Action that's a hit on our Major League Game of the Week. Then the baseball action continues as the Expos deal with the Astros. It's the second of two. Montreal and Houston live from Olympic Stadium. And later we're in Daytona Beach, Florida with one thing in mind. NASCAR racing. Winston Cup points are on the line at the Pepsi 400. Saturday, the thrills are here on TSN. And that's where we'll be next Tuesday to bring you the game between the Blue Jays and the Baltimore Orioles. Memorial Stadium in the background. Tuesday night at 7.30 Eastern time. The matchup will be Mike Flanagan against Jay Tibbs. And don't forget uh, Montreal on the Mets Monday the 26th at 7.30. So lots of baseball for you right here on TSN. Meanwhile, here in Oakland. We've got a whale of a ball game, three to two after six innings, Oakland leading. Storm Davis still on the mound, and Ernie Witt will lead things off for Toronto. Over 48,000 fans here this afternoon. Davis has allowed five hits. Four of those hits came in the first inning. And then he has literally shut the Jays down after that. Felix in the third let it off with a walk, stole second. And Fernandez singled. Felix remained at third, and then Kelly Gruber hit into a double play, and that scored Felix. So that's how the Blue Jays have their runs. Witt fouls that one back. Rick Honeycutt, the left-hander, the veteran on that pitching staff, is up and throwing. And Davis has done a good job through six. A ball and two strikes now to Ernie Witt. So often if you don't get to a veteran pitcher early when you got a chance when you got him on the ropes he'll come back and haunt you. And that's what Davis has done here this Sunday afternoon. Curveball just tapped foul. Witt hitting just over 300 has a great on base percentage almost 400 this season. So he has done his job offensively. Dave Steam looks on the losing pitcher in yesterday's ball game.
Two and two the count. California still leading seven to three in the fifth inning over Baltimore. They look down to the third base umpire, Tim Welke, for the appeal. He said no. So it's a full count to Witt. He went after a high pitch that Blankenship fields down at second and throws Witt out. Looked to be a little out of the strike zone. Ernie Witt might have gone after ball four, but it was up in his area where he likes the ball. The only thing he tried to do was pull it. Look at this fastball up and away from him. Tries to pull it. If he goes the other way, he might get a base hit on that ball because that's where he likes it. But he tried to pull it on the ground. Had a chance for a walk in that leadoff situation. Blue Jays need some base runners. Now Mosby, the hitter. Mosby flied out to Ricky Henderson and left in the first. And then came back in the fourth and hit a line shot at Henderson, who made a, an excellent running catch on the warning track to nail him. So the Shakers 0 for 2. Big swing. He was thinking downtown right there, but a swing got awfully long, and that slowed it down. He was behind the fastball. Well, you get away from the games like Mosby's. Missed eight games in a row. Hasn't had a chance to play. Angels still lead Baltimore. Two balls and a strike to Mosby. Last time he started, June the 7th, that final game against Milwaukee in Milwaukee. He's been taking an awful lot of extra batting practice and in Anaheim especially really had some good sessions hitting the long ball hitting the ball to all fields. The 2 2 pitch fouled back out of play. Boy Davis is really making some good pitches here in the later stage of this ball game moving that fastball in and out keeping the Blue Jay hitters off stride not really establishing any particular pattern. Well, he came into this game and the opposition, they were hitting 323 off him. But he still had a winning record, 5 and 3. Fly ball, right field. Javier drops the glasses down, waits for it. Boy, he had to battle that sun, didn't he? Bright sunny day out here in Oakland as we look at the rest of the American League scores. Minnesota beats Boston and Mike Boddicker. That game in Milwaukee where they beat Chicago 3 to 1. Jamie Navarro got his first major league win. He's the son of former major leaguer Julio Navarro who pitched in the American League for several years. He gets his first win. The Yankees beat Kansas City 5 4. Steve Balboni hit a home run. A two run shot for the Yankees. Andy Hawkins got the win in that one. Charlie Liebrand took the loss. Mullinix is 0 for 2 today. And in the National League, New York beating Philadelphia and Mulholland, a new pitcher that they acquired in that Bedrosian deal. Pittsburgh winning over St. Louis. And Houston put it to Atlanta 12 to 6. Schatzeter got the win for Houston. He's 4-0. Jim Acker, the ex-Blue Jay, took the loss. He's 0-3. Acker came on to pitch in the fifth inning, and Hasselmacher took over in the seventh. So Mullenix goes down, and we head to the bottom of the seventh inning, and the Oakland A's sitting on a one-run lead. You're watching LeBats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Play Walt Disney World Baseball Magic at all A&P Dominion stores. This year, three ways to win. Win up to $10,000 instantly. Win trips for two to Orlando, Florida, home of Disney MGM Studios. 
All trips provided by Treasure Tours, a world of vacations, or collect and win GMC trucks, microwaves and VCRs from Sharp, diamond rings from Cyril's or sports watches from Citizen, Schneider's processed cheese food slices, taste the difference quality makes, and Nesty Iced Tea invites you to try Nesty Iced Tea Mix. We're here at the new Disney MGM Studios theme park in Florida for the premiere of the new Chevy Lumina. The Lumina sedan has the most passenger room in its class. The Lumina Coupe sets the standard for personal sports suits. And the all-new Lumina all-purpose vehicle with optional seating for seven, no matter what the size. Introducing the family Lumina from Chevrolet. Chevy Lumina, official car of the Disney MGM Studios theme park. This is new. Howard Johnson, can this be you? This is Howard Johnson today. This is Howard Johnson today. This is Howard Johnson today. Changing in so many colorful, comfortable, welcoming ways. This is Howard Johnson today. This is Howard Johnson today. The division-leading Baltimore Orioles will be in the home of the Blue Jays. The Sky Dome for a three-game series Tuesday, July the 4th. And that, dear friends, is a sellout. In fact, that entire series, Baltimore and the Blue Jays. You don't want to miss that one. You can always sit in the restaurant out in center field. Cost you three bucks to get in, but you... Gotta have a nice buffet. At least you can watch the ball game. Pretty good seat out in center field, too. Not bad at all. Okay, Dwayne Ward is pitching here for the Blue Jays. Ward came on in the sixth. Top of the order, Ricky and Dave Henderson and Carney Lansford. The difference in this ball game, a two-run homer by Stan Javier. Back in the fifth inning. Anderson, two for two with a walk and a stolen base. Evens up the count of the ball and the strike. After today's game, Oakland will open up a seven-day, six-game road trip tomorrow in Minnesota. Well, the last 16 games, these A's... They're seven and nine, but they still picked up a game on Kansas City. Kansas City lost again today, five to four to the Yankees. Those are the type of things that happen when you're going to win a pennant. You don't have your whole team out there. You're losing, but the rest of the league can't gain any ground or close the gap. Three and one, the count. Off his bat, full count. Over 48,000 fans here. I guess you'd be interested to know that as you look at the final score, Montreal behind the pitching of Dennis Martinez, who went six to get his seventh win of the season. He's seven and one. Beat Chicago five to nothing. The Dodgers won it seven to nothing. Ball four to Ricky Henderson. It's tough to walk people in relief. Dwayne Ward has walked oh, two. Henderson getting instructions from Dave McKay. And with Ward's move to first, Henderson won't wait very long to steal second, I would think. He's very deliberate to the plate. He doesn't have a real good move to first, and that's why you hate to see Ward walk anybody, especially Ricky Henderson. One stolen base and one attempt today. Dave Henderson, the hitter. Ricky getting a good lead at first. Doesn't go a bunt by Dave Henderson. That's rather surprising. I would have thought they'd have given Ricky a pitch or two to steal. Get him down to second base, but Tony La Russa. Playing it safe. Going safety first. Now he has Henderson in scoring position. Dave Henderson with a perfect sacrifice bunt. He's not asked to bunt very often, but Ward makes the routine play to first base. I guess when you feel you've got the third leading hitter in the American League and Carney Lansford came into this game hitting 338 
He's 0 for 3, though. And then behind him, you've got Mark McGuire. The pickoff attempt, they might have had him. Ward hesitated. He turned around, saw the big gap there, and he kind of froze himself. He didn't turn loose to the ball. Watch him spin around and then hesitate. He's got Henderson so dead to rights that it surprised even Ward. If he throws that immediately, he gets Ricky at second base. But he was off and running. He had a third base on his mind there. For a strike to Carney Lansford. You can't allow Ricky Anderson to get a walking lead from second base. He'll bury it. He'll really take advantage of it. So the infielder's job right now is to make Henderson stop. Take the momentum away from him. Inside. Ward can't let his concentration be misdirected to second base entirely, but he does have to stop Henderson. His main concern now is to get Carney Lansford, the hitter, with one out. You know, you look back on Carney Lansford, and you see where last year, as late as June the 6th, he was hitting 400. He finished off the season at 279. And earlier, he was up over 350, and he's been slowly tailing off. The same pattern as last year, and the year before, and the year before. Just misses outside, three and one. The only difference between last couple of years and this year in the batting instructor's mind about Lansford is the fact that Carney has a good swing going this year. Last year he was getting a lot of hits, but he didn't have real sound mechanics. This year they feel like they have a very good foundation at the plate, and they don't expect the type of drop-off. Also, the way Lansford plays so hard that he's been worn out towards the end of the year. Full count. Lansford had such an unusual defensive style and positioning at third base. He really wears himself out over the course of nine innings. By the end of the game, he's just beat down. By the end of a season, he's really tired. So I think that's had a lot to do with his demise at the end of the year as far as his batting average. Oh, they had him picked off. Henderson stealing third. He's there. That makes it the seventh time that Henderson has stolen third this season. It's ball four. Witt had a pitch down and away. Makes a pretty good throw, but you can see it's just too late. Henderson got a great jump. He still has presence to look and see where the pitch is. That head first slide, his hand beats the tag, and he's in there. So Ward is in trouble with Mark McGuire at the plate. You know, with all... McGuire follows that one off. With all the problems of Pete Rose and what's happening to Cincinnati, they lost 7 to nothing to the Dodgers today. Oral Hirschheiser pitched his fourth shutout this year and the 23rd of his career. And Eddie Murray went 3 for 4 with 3 RBIs in that one. And Mickey Hatcher 3 for 3. Ward looks like he's trying to overthrow right now. Well, he's pitched himself into a jam. Lead off walk to Henderson. And then Dave Henderson sacrificed Ricky to second. And Liriano had Henderson dead to right. But Ward didn't throw. McGuire. Out of play. Well, McGuire is a little bit late on that fastball. But he's very aware of it, and that pitch was up a bit. That's his weakness. He struck out twice today against Jimmy Key, and now Dwayne Ward sure could use a strikeout. Strikeout or a double play, the Blue Jays will go on the offense. Nice play by Witt. Especially with Henderson standing down there at third base. Six hits for the A's, five for the Blue Jays. 
Henderson does so many things to the defense. Witt has to be on his toes behind the plate. A short pass ball, wild pitch, and he can score easily. Look out. Deep to center. Mosby back at the track. He's got it. Henderson tags. He'll score. Four to two. Well, the walks have killed Dwayne Ward. He has pitched an inning in two-thirds and has given up three walks. And the A's take advantage of those walks. McGuire goes down and gets a pretty good pitch. A sinker ball lifts it into the outfield. All the way to the track at the 375 mark. Easily, Ricky Henderson comes across the score. He could have crawled home on that one. But he makes things happen. He got on with the walk. Went to second on the sacrifice bunt and then stole third. Got himself into scoring position. Terry Steinbach, the hitter, with Carney Lansford down at first for the walk. Two down, seventh inning. Ward's job was to come in and try to hold these A's. Give the Blue Jays a chance to score a couple of runs and take the lead. Now it's a 4-2 to two ball game. And he's still in trouble. It's very difficult to be successful as a relief pitcher by issuing walks. Two walks in this inning has led to a blue uh, A's run. And Dwayne Ward, as sharp as he can be at times, has always been haunted this year by the walk. Off the end of the bat into the Blue Jay dugout. Where George Bell is sitting, resting today. Bell ejected in yesterday's game, given the day off today. So it'll actually add up to two with the schedule off day tomorrow. Outside. A ball and two strikes to Steinbach. Seventh inning down at Anaheim, 7-4. The Angels leading the Orioles. So Dwayne Ward strikes out Terry Steinbach. But the Oakland A's managed to score another run and lead it 4-2. to two. You're watching LeBats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. I'm a bird man. Know what I am. I'm a bird man. I'm a bird man. Know what I am. I'm a bird man. Underneath all those delicious pizza toppings lies the secret of McCain Croissant Pizza. You gonna finish that last piece of crust? If you'll let me have it, I'll uh, double your allowance. How about a new stereo for that last bite of crust? What a guy. McCain Croissant Pizza. With the crust nobody leaves behind. GM makes the dream. GMAC makes the dream yours with either financing or smart lease. Handled quickly, easily, right at your GM dealers. Well, there's action in the Toronto Blue Jay bullpen. Dwayne Bice on the left and Frank Wills on the right. With Wills throwing, that might verify our thoughts about Dave Steve yeah. being moved up into that start on Thursday. Well, I'm sure he will be. 
Who would you sooner go with in, a, in an important game like that? Well, I don't know if it's that crucial a time in the season yet. You know, you should, certainly want to win against the Orioles, but Wills has been terrible in his last two starts after two very good starts. Manny Lee down the left field line. It is foul. Hit that one pretty good. Storm Davis has set down 15 in a row. What a job he has done. And the Blue Jays had him on the ropes in the first inning. Four singles in the first, and they only scored one run. Kelly Gruber was thrown out at third by Javier, the right fielder. Boy, that's a pretty potent lineup right there, isn't it? The unfortunate thing for the A's is they're all on the stable list. Jose Canseco, Walt Weiss in the middle, and Dennis Eckersley on the end. Boy, if they all come back second half of this year, it could be curtains for the rest of the division. They might not need them the way they're playing. I think Oakland they A's would. are still in first place. Welcome them back, oh, though. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but Canseco was scheduled to go to Modesto tonight to play in the California League game. His shoulder's been bothering him. I spoke to Eckersley the other day, and he said he'd be ready to throw, or he'd be back next Friday. But who knows? Welch is supposed to start on Friday. Eckersley, great year last year. Fireman of the year. Eckersley this season, he's 1-0 with 14 saves. And Weiss fell in the middle there, underwent... A knee operation for torn cartilage. He'll be back after the All-Star game. Manny Lee fouls off another one. It's a full count. There's a lot of hardware there, too, from last year's season. Conseco MVP, Weiss, Rookie of the Year, third straight Oakland Athletics Rookie of the Year. Conseco, McGuire, and then Weiss, three in a row. And Eckersley, of course, Fireman of the Year, MVP in the playoffs. Ground ball up the middle. Base hit, Manny Lee. So the Blue Jays finally have a runner on. Solid single through the infield. Gets things going for the Blue Jays. They needed a base runner. Get back in this ball game. Let's see if that can spark the offense. Now here comes Tony La Russa for a visit to the mound to see Storm Davis. He's got Rick Honeycutt throwing once again down in the bullpen. The veteran left-hander retired 11 batters he faced in that extra inning game on Friday. But the skipper has certainly got a good day's work out of the starter, Storm Davis. And especially the way Davis has struggled. He needed a good outing from the right-hander to get Davis back on track. Touched up for a run in the first. And then a solo run in the third. Two runs on six hits to this point, and that's going to be his day. Well, Liriano is a better hitter from the left side, so they'll turn him around. And Storm Davis leaves. He's given up two runs on six hits. And he's got the job done. He gets a fine round of applause here from the 48,000-plus fans. Dave Duncan, most clubs couldn't survive losing Dennis Eckersley, but your club hasn't missed a beat because of the depth down in the bullpen. Well, Buck, we've been very fortunate to have a guy like Rick Honeycutt who has proven that he can go in and, and uh, close off a game. He's got a lot of experience uh, uh, at the major league level, and, and it certainly has been valuable to us. And, of course, last year Todd Burns came along and, and did a tremendous job for us as a starter, and, and now he's proven that he can fill just about any role that uh, we need him to fill in the bullpen, including uh, closer. So uh, between him, uh, Todd Burns and, and Rick Honeycutt, they've both done a great job in short relief. Well, Honeycutt is 1-0 with seven saves. And six of the nine saves he has picked up since Eckersley was injured. This pitching change is brought to you by Absorbe Jr., the relief specialist. Absorbing cream makes aching my 
muscles feel ah. So Honeycutt will face Nelson Luriano and then Felix and Fernandez here in the eighth inning. The Blue Jays down by two. Rick Honeycutt has started throughout most of his career as really flourished in the relief role, even since taking over as the short man. With Eckersley down, Honeycutt has been outstanding. This will be his 30th game in relief. Just 20 hits in almost 40 innings. Good control. He's got sinker slider. And they're still dancing in the streets in this packed house here in the Oakland Coliseum. I'll tell you what, right, they sunny sure day. have fun in this ballpark, don't they? But and Honeycutt it's... pitched in relief on Friday, retired all 11 batters that he faced. He gave up a sacrifice fly to Junior Felix that tied the game in the ninth inning. But he's tough to mount an attack against. He has an opponent's batting average of just 154. But Tony La Russa wanted this guy, Nelson Liriano, batting from the right side. Although he's a natural right-handed hitter, he hits much better from the left side. Manny Lee at first, nobody out, eighth inning. Ground ball back to Honeycutt. He'll go to Gallego for one double play. One pitch, a double play. You can't do much better than that. Rick Honeycutt coming on with nobody out. Runner at first base throws one pitch to the batter, Liriano. Makes a strike, toss the second to Gallego. Back to first, the double play. And that's a great job of relief. Honeycutt's an outstanding fielder, takes his time, makes sure he has a grip on the ball. Starts the 1 6 3 double play. So a two down, Junior Felix from the right side, where he's hitting 2 17 this season. One home run from the right side. Felix in this ball game, a bunt single with two strikes on him in the first inning, walked in the third, struck out in the fifth. For a strike. Tony Fernandez will be our guest on extra innings. He had a 16 game hitting streak snap yesterday afternoon, but he's been hot. 445-1811, the number to call. Steinbach hustled on that ball in the dirt because there were two strikes on Felix. And he checked his swing and Steinbach hustling on it in case they got the appeal call down at first base. He'd have been able to toss the first, but the umpire at first said no swing. Two and two. Honeycutt will throw the kitchen sink at you. Sinker, fastball, he'll run that slider in on the right-hander's hands, throws a changeup and a curveball, he's got them all. Strikes him out. So the Blue Jays go quickly and quietly here in the eighth inning. Four to two, the A's leading. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Esso would like to shed some light on the subject of gasoline. Not all gasolines are right for your car. Some can cause engine knock, even engine damage. Now there's new Esso Supreme with added deposit control. A premium gasoline specially formulated to provide smoother burning, more power, and acceleration. In short, regular gasoline can't hold a candle to new SO Supreme.
Chevy Blazer, GMC Jimmy, General Motors Trucks, the trucks more people lean on. That's for all you folks back in Toronto who aren't at this ball game here today on a sunny afternoon in Oakland. <laughs> A 4-2 ball game. The Oakland A's leading the Toronto Blue Jays. Bottom of the eighth inning. Phillips, Blankenship, and Gallego will face the right-hander, Dwayne Ward. Six hits for both teams. The Blue Jays trying to get out of this road trip at five and or at six and one. They have won five of the six that they have played here on the West Coast. Three in Anaheim. A couple here. They lost yesterday and are on the verge of losing here today. A strike to Phillips from Ward. Jimmy Key started. He went five innings, gave up three runs, all earned, six hits, struck out a pair, and he walked three. And then Ward came on in the sixth inning. Gave up a walk and then retired the side. And then in the seventh, he walked the leadoff hitter, Ricky Henderson. And then Dave Henderson sacrificed him to second. He then stole third when Lansford walked. And Mark McGuire hit a sacrifice fly. Phillips is out, four to three. That extra run in the seventh inning really changed the entire attack for the Blue Jays. They could play for one run and tie it up, but now they got to get some base runners, got to get some hits, string some hits together. If they had a base runner on before, they could play bunt, trying to get that one run in to tie the game. But that extra insurance run in the seventh put an extra burden on Cito Gaston and his Blue Jays. And the A's cashed in without the benefit of a hit. A walk, sacrifice bunt, sacrifice fly. Blankenship the hitter, Ward ahead, 0 and 2. California leading in the eighth inning, 7 to 4 over Baltimore. It was Ballard against McCaskill. Blankenship has had a rough day at the plate. He's 0 for 3. The 2-2 pitch fouled back out of play. The A's are leading this season series four games to three. Prior to yesterday's 7-1 victory. Toronto had won three in a row. Tom Hankey is up and throwing. Oh, he sure had a good outing Friday night to pick up his third save of the season. With a breaking ball and gets Lance Blankenship looking. That's the third strikeout for Dwayne Ward. The two down, that'll bring up the shortstop, Mike Gallego, who's walked a couple of times, scored a run, and struck out. He was Ward's first strikeout victim in the sixth. Way outside. Just really lost his momentum there. There it is in the eighth inning. California leading Baltimore 7-4. to four. So the Angels hold on there. And Oakland, whoop, he's hit. Gallego will head down to first. Last couple of days, the Athletics hitters have taken a beating. McGuire and 
Lansford yesterday, and now Gallego takes him on the elbow. That fastball gets away from Ward. He's protecting his ribs and draws it in. You can see he's not real pleased about that. But the first pitch to Ward was way outside, and this one was way inside. Ward just really didn't have a good idea where it's going at all. Stan Javier. His blast in the fifth inning, a two-run shot, tied the game up. And then with Ricky Henderson hitting a single, stole second, and Dave Henderson singled to drive him in with a go-ahead run. Two balls and no strikes. See, Ward's fighting himself out there today. He's not in a real good rhythm, not in a real good delivery. One time it'll be inside, next time it'll be outside. He just doesn't have a real good rhythm going today. So important for a pitcher. Well, you notice when he does have a good rhythm going, he'll work a lot quicker. There's a strike. And that's a momentum thing where a pitcher feels good about what's happening and he gets the ball, wants to fire, looks in, real confident about the call the catcher's making and he starts working quickly. And all the things, things steamroll, throws a lot of strikes, gets a lot of outs. Now he's struggling to find it. Threw that one right by Javier. As we look ahead to the Blue Jays' ninth, it'll be Fernandez, Gruber, and McGriff to face Rick Honeycutt. And they've got George Bell on the bench yes. to pinch hit. Should they get a runner on? Bell will probably hit for Ernie Witt if Witt gets to the plate. There he is. A day off today. Waving to everybody in Canada. Be interesting to see how the league reacts to that ejection yesterday. There was some bumping between he and home plate umpire Tim Welke. Cito said he felt he bumped him with his hat. I think that just goes into report as a bump. There's Welke down at third today. I think that's the third time Tim Welke's thrown him out of a ball game. Full count to Javier. Fouls that one off. Well, I'll tell you, regardless of what happens here this afternoon, it's been a great road trip so far for the Blue Jays, and what they'll need to do is put the icing on the cake in Baltimore. Well, if they should go on to lose this game, split here in Oakland, not that bad at all after three in a row down in Anaheim. Going into Baltimore, they've got to have their spirits a mile high. They've played themselves back into this pennant race. That's the way it stands right now. Yankees starting to play a little better. Kyle Matting has been on a tear lately. It'll be very interesting before this one's all over. That pitch is low. Javier is on with a walk. That's the fifth walk that Ward has issued. And Here comes Cito Gaston. Ward walked the leadoff hitter in the sixth. Then he came back with two more walks in the seventh and then two more here in the eighth. Gaston has David Wells throwing down there. Hinky sat down. Wells, the left-hander, got up. But once again, like this pattern has been throughout Cito Gaston's tenure as a manager, he's just out there to give confidence to Ward as Wells continues to throw. And Gaston says, okay, Dwayne, you haven't given up a hit yet. Just throw it over the plate. Stay away from the walks, and I think we'll get you out of this thing. Ward hit Gallego. So it's just four walks that he's uh, issued. But nevertheless, he's in trouble again here in the eighth inning with Ricky Henderson at the plate. 
Henderson's been on base all four times. Two walks, two singles. Scored a run. Stolen two bases. Fouls that one back out of play. Ward ahead on two. He's such a different pitcher when he's ahead in the count because he really puts the batter on defensive. He's got such good stuff. If he's 0-2 on the count, then he can throw the slider. He can throw another good fastball. Just misses outside. Pretty good pitch. Ernie Witt was ready to go out and shake his hand right there. He thought he had strike three. The veteran catcher jumped up, felt it was good enough for Jim Evans to ring him up. But Evans, the home plate umpire, called it just outside. A ball and two strikes. That gets away from Witt. Ward will come in, cover at the plate. Gallego comes down the line, but he'll head back. That'll probably be scored a wild pitch, but that's one of those in between. I know it's in the dirt, but watch Witt. He doesn't get good position, tries to backhand it. It was a nasty pitch that hit right around the home plate area, and Witt has to retreat, play it off the back wall. But the runners move up 90 feet. Now they're at second and third with two outs. But that ball in the dirt, Ward throws that breaking ball so hard, you really have to fight yourself to get out there and shift in front of it, block it, and keep it in front of you. Reaches and fouls that one off. He should make a big difference to this ball club. Well, he's done it in the last two days. Hit a home run in yesterday's game off Dave Steve. And today, been on base four times. Scored a run. Two stolen bases. He scored two runs. After he walked into seventh and scored. That pitch is high. So after going ahead 0-2, Wayne Ward has messed around and got a full count on Ricky Henderson. David Wells is up and throwing now in the Blue Jay bullpen. just where he wanted him 0-2 then went to the full count Henderson touches him up for a two-run single in the center field Henderson had the luxury of a full count and looked for a fastball got it and hammered it in the center with two outs the runners score easily so Ricky Henderson has had a day three for five driven in two scored two stolen two bases and David Wells will come on in relief of Dwayne Ward. That was the first hit allowed by Dwayne Ward. But it was a big one as Ward's control causes him problems here today. He's walked four batters, hit a batter. Only given up one hit, but it was a big one to Ricky Henderson. So David Wells has come on. Wells pitched two-thirds of an inning for his second save on Thursday night. He got Parker on a fly ball, and he struck out Phillips to end the game. And, of course, you'll remember in Anaheim last Wednesday, he blew a save opportunity when he gave up the tying home run to Brian Downing in the ninth inning. 
the Jays eventually won that one in the 14th. He has probably been the most consistent pitcher out of the Blue Jays bullpen all season long. He has held the opposition scoreless in 13 of his last 19 outings. And he is averaging a strikeout an inning. And he'll be facing Dave Henderson here in the eighth. Six to two. As that hit by Ricky Henderson has really put the icing on the cake for this one for Oakland. And it all happened with two outs. Ward got the first two batters, Phillips and Blankenship, and then hit Gallego on a one ball pitch. And then he walked Javier. And then Henderson with a base hit to center drove in two. That pitch is high for a ball. Henderson, an RBI single in the fifth, so he's one for three. throw down. Pitch was a strike. So Henderson has his third stolen base. And this is no contest at all. Henderson got a great jump off David Wells. Look at that jump. Full speed right there. The A's saw the Blue Jays put up seven on the board Friday night in the first inning, so they're not sitting back for anything. You just call it aggressive baseball. Four runs up and you're stealing. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, pretty good day, Ricky. Count remains a ball and two strikes to Dave Henderson. Jimmy Key started for Toronto today, went five innings through 92 pitches, gave up three earned runs, six hits, struck out a couple, walked three, and he is the pitcher of record for Toronto. He left the game trailing three to two. A high hopper to Manny Lee for the third out. So we head to the ninth inning, and the Blue Jays are down by four. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays Baseball on TSN. Looking for that perfect camcorder? Exactly. The Zenith. Zenith? Yeah. Uses a full-size VHS cassette. It has the latest professional features, and it's fully automatic. Great. Or, if you want something smaller... Yeah? The Zenith. Zenith. It's a compact VHS. Autofocus. Uh, really easy to use, and it's surprisingly affordable. So it's the Zenith. Or the Zenith. I think I'm leaning toward the Zenith. <laughs> Good choice. Tonight, I celebrate my love for you. Experience the magic with Shades of Love. 45 unforgettable soft rock hits. Here I am, the one that you love. Silver Eagle Records presents Shades of Love, a new soft rock collection of 45 all-time classic hits on four LPs, three cassettes, or three compact discs. To order, call now. Relive the magic with Shades of Love, 45 classic soft rock hits on four LPs or three cassettes, $24.95. Three compact discs, $34.95. Write or call now. A reminder, Tony Fernandez will be our guest on Extra Innings immediately following this game. And don't forget to watch Baltimore Tuesday night and the Blue Jays, 7.30 Eastern time, right here on TSN. First game of that three-game series, Mike Flanagan against Jay Tibbs. Tibbs 4-0, Flanagan 4-3. And, and then Wednesday, it's Cerruti against Brian Holden. And it'll probably be Dave Steeb on Thursday. 
against Dave Schmidt, who's seven and six. In Anaheim, they're just starting the top of the ninth inning. It's still the same score. The Angels leading seven to four over the Orioles. So if everything holds, holds up, the Blue Jays will still trail Baltimore by six games. And they'll be looking to win at least two out of three in Baltimore. Fernandez leads it off. He has a base hit today, a single in the third inning. Rick Honeycutt came on in the eighth inning in relief of starter Storm Davis. Honeycutt threw one pitch. As Fernandez, Blankenship backhands that, a wild throw to first. Fernandez will head down on to second. And we'll wait and see if they give Tony a base hit on that or will an error be charged to Blankenship? I think it'll be a base hit and an error. Backhanded, just a prayer of a throw to first, wide of first. McGuire can't knock it down. Steve coaxing it into the dugout. And Fernandez will go to second, but I think they'll score that a base hit and an error. As I was saying about Honeycutt, though, as you look at that play again, he threw one pitch to Nelson Luriano, got a double play ball in the eighth inning, then he struck out Felix. So Fernandez, very alert, heads on down to second. Now, if Ward could have held him on the scoreboard, the tying run would have been at the plate. Now the Blue Jays have to peck away. Gruber, the hitter. One for three. and backs up to the warning track. Gruber just missed that ball, just got under it and skied it to left field, took Henderson all the way to the warning track. And he just missed that one. There's no question who the Labatt's player of the game for Oakland is today. Ricky Henderson, who's had a great day, now the batter is Fred McGriff. Fred with an RBI single in the first inning. That was his 42nd run batted in this season. Fly ball, center field, Henderson. The glass is down for the second out. Fernandez tags, but he will stay at second. Pretty good throw right on the money. Nowhere for Fernandez to go as McGriff flies out deep to center field. But Honeycutt has been tough for the Blue Jays to figure out. They've only mustered one hit off of him in the last two appearances. Friday night he retired all 11 batters he faced. Fernandez with a leadoff infield single here in the ninth inning. Now Pat Borders will come out as a pinch hitter. Trying to keep the things alive for the Blue Jays here in the ninth. They trail by four. Six to two. Borders, one home run this season. Has driven in just 14. Borders is one for five as a pinch hitter this year. He's been swinging the bat much better lately. gets away from the catcher Steinbach so Fernandez halfway down the line heading for home why take a chance you're down by four what for a moment looked like he was going all the way well that ball took a funny carom off the back wall and Steinbach had to chase it all the way in front of the Blue Jays bullpen their dugout watch Fernandez aggressively around the bag if this is a one run game he's got a shot at scoring but not when you're four runs down McLaren saying get back to third base but Gaston's got to be thinking about those insurance runs in the seventh and eighth that the A's put up on the board right now. Really hurt the ball club. Three runs. 
You're talking about a one-run game right now with Fernandez on third. A ground ball, foul. So it's a ball and two strikes to Borders. You know, this would have been a situation for George Bell to hit in had the A's not scored those two runs. Two in the eighth. But a lot of ifs in a season. Base hit up the middle for Pat Borders. And the Blue Jays are still alive. It is six to three. Borders continues to improve at the plate. He's been working hard, extra batting practice, gets a curveball from Honeycutt here and stays right on it, something he hadn't done earlier in the year, and drives it through the infield. That's his first RBI as a pinch hitter this year. Improves his mark to two for six on the pinch hitting side. Mosby. Now, why not let Bell hit in this situation? Because you're hoping Mosby can get on base and use Bell for Rance Mullinex. Then Bell represents the tying run. Okay. That's a good answer. There he is. Mosby's got to keep it alive. That pitch is low. One and one. Boy, you'd sure like to have those three runs back that you gave the A's in the seventh and eighth. He went around. So it's a ball and two strikes. The A's fans have seen their ball club battle back from a two-run deficit. And they're on the verge of taking a 6-3 win. Two and two, the count to the shaker. Mosby today 0 for 3. stands out of play. Honeycutt is in line for a save in this situation. He came on in the eighth inning. He sure is. With a one-run lead, then the Athletics tacked on two more, so he's looking for a save. That would give him eight on the year. That's popped up, and Ricky Henderson might have a chance. No, it's into the stands. Can't get to it. So the shaker stays alive at two and two. With his family and friends here at the park today. Sure would like to get on base. That's popped up out in the left field. Henderson, he's there. He's got it. This game is history. The Oakland A's win it 6-3. to three. Rick Honeycutt gets his eighth save. But two stories in today's ball game. That man right there, Ricky Henderson, three for three, scored a couple of runs, stole three bases, and drove in a couple. And no doubt about it, and it's been said many, many times, one of the most dominant players in the game today, when he's right, look out. They were concerned about the players they had to get up to give Henderson, but I don't think it's a problem at all because Ricky Henderson is going to make a tremendous contribution to this Oakland Athletics Ball Club. The other story in the game was Oakland starter Storm Davis, who went seven-plus innings, and he was touched up for six hits. Four of those hits came in the first inning, and then after that, he allowed just two singles and through one stretch, retired 15 in a row. So Henderson and Storm Davis for the Oakland A's, what a job they did. 
And Oakland win their 46th ball game. They're 17 games. Or 15 games over uh, 500, I should say. Well, the Blue Jays now drop two under 500. 36 and 38. But they're six back of Baltimore. They'll have a day off tomorrow in Baltimore. And then they'll open up a three-game series. There it is, the final score. The A's win at 6-3. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. <laughs> 